Hello everyone. Welcome to Zaran Tech. In today's digital age, businesses rely on robust technology to stay competitive. SAP Advanced Business Application Programming on HANA is one such powerful tool. Let's explore the dynamic blend of SAP's ABAP language and HANA's advanced capabilities. But first, let's grasp the essence of SAP ABAP on HANA. SAP ABAP on HANA isn't just a buzzword, it's a game changer. With 30,000 plus businesses already benefiting, it reduces data footprint by up to 90% enabling lightning fast analysis and real-time insights. Think of processing vast data in seconds, driving agile decisions and innovation. It's not just about efficiency, but about staying ahead in today's competitive landscape. But before we begin, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive regular updates from us. Now let us take a look at the agenda. One, components of SAP, two, SAP GUI, three, accessing ABAP, four, ABAP programming fundamentals, five, control statements and operators. Let's dive in. So let me uh, set the expectations about this program team because as we have uh, various group of, uh, you know, um, audiences over here in this training. Normally, uh, how TCS is actually planning the training programs, uh, this particular session is SAP ABAP on HANA. This is basically the introduction part, introduction of SAP ABAP towards HANA and SAP S4 HANA. Definitely those who are experienced in SAP ABAP, around I found about three to four people, also will come to know uh, some new things about SAP S4 HANA in this course. But this 80 hours training program itself is not going to teach you everything what is there inside above, right? That is definitely not possible as well because it, it, it will definitely need to cover about everything what is there in, in above, including all latest and greatest stuff together. Uh, easily it will be uh, taking about 300 hours of training is required. This is doing, but not all at once in a single shot. So as I said also before, so this particular training program is basically intended for introduce SAP ABAP, introduce SAP technologies to the people. And also the basic, uh, basic in the sense of what I mean to say is about the essential skills what are required to kick off to kickstart your ABAP journey. So here in this course, ABAP programming basics, data dictionary objectives, how to develop report programs, how to develop smart forms, how to do basic enhancements and the debugging techniques and the introduction to the latest technologies of SAP S4 HANA like ODATA, CDS views, just that is about the introduction part only. That will be covered in this 80 hours of course program. Accordingly, that course agenda also has been prepared. The materials, exercises, everything has been prepared as such. All the group of people here, mostly those who are new to SAP ABAP and those who are SAP functional definitely will be in a position to grab more out of this uh, particular course program. Once if you complete this 80 hours of training program, you know, after you get an opportunity to work either in a project or after you do spend some time on doing some hands-on, then there is another program basically is coming out from again TCS and you will be nominated for this program according to your uh, leads according to your um, project requirements. So during that time, you know how the leads will nominate the people for that advanced lab up program is all about like those who have already completed this essential program, basic uh, core program. Uh, and and I'm also even uh, expect all the people in that program, only those who already learned about, who knows, things well in detail in ABAP only are eligible for the program to attend because there, once again, I don't have the option to start from the scratch. Straight away, we will get into the topics. Okay, let's do, get start, how to create our data service. We will directly get into that. We will directly jump into that. And then we'll start explaining about, okay, let's create an data service, consume external data in your ABAP code and uh, expose your data service for external world. Something like that, we do get start. 
So people who doesn't know anything about ABAP, uh, for them it will be like a Malayana movie. They cannot. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean to say about that, uh, other than uh, picture what is coming on the screen, nothing else can be understood because uh, pressures cannot. It is at an advanced uh, level of program. That is part two, and there is another thing that is called part three. So that is basically um, is all about taking ABAP towards the cloud infrastructure or wrap application developments that is completely taking ABAP onto the cloud and making cloud-based developments and cloud-based communications that is uh, far away different from this uh, basic um, core part so like that your ABAP program is actually taking place from the basics to the top notch in three different stages among that this particular program is about the stage one most of the times, the audiences also will be chosen for this program who are in that zone, who are basically required to attend this program. Some of the people who are here who already know ABAP um, to some extent well and worked on ABAP quite for some good time, they will come to know about s 4 ana introduction and s 4 ana part only, but not really, uh, you know, uh, the very advanced things like about CDS views, BOPFs, or data creations, etc. As that is not going to be covered in this course in this 80 hours of scheduled day. Because it, as, I, as I already said, 80 plus 80 plus 80, it is a complete course of about 200 and, uh, 242, including project, it is closely coming about 300 hours of training program where end-to-end -end stuff, things will get covered. But for that, this is the starting stone, starting step, and uh, your journey will get started here. Okay, team. Let's start our journey today uh, with the first question. What is SAP? SAP stands for Systems, Applications, and Products. That is the abbreviation form. Uh, everyone uh, almost knows that. Even my question is also more uh, beyond that, not about the abbreviation form, but what is SAP? Yeah. So, so feel free to share, team. You can feel very comfortable with me. This all this interaction is all to help you out. Also. Nothing else. Absolutely, right or wrong, you are not going to be assessed on that in it anyway. So you can say anything. What is SAP? In your own way, what do you answer? Suppose you, you, you went to home, your sister or cousin brother somewhere is there, and you told them that hey, today onwards I'm attending some SAP training. Or oh, is it? They don't know anything. Then they asked what is SAP? She is uh, he or she is little interested, curiosity. She wanted to know just a little about SAP. She asked you, hey, oh, is it you're attending a training? Okay, that's fine. What is, what is this SAP? Same question. What do you say to them? What answer you will give? To say for your sister or brother who asked at your home, you said that it is a licensed software for some for so and so purpose. Why are we buy, buying that? Because we always we will spend some money and we will buy something when there is some purpose out of it, right? When there is some need, and when that product is basically fulfilling that purpose, then only we will buy that one. We'll spend some money and we'll buy that one. Absolutely. That's good. I will ask another question similar to that. Now let us try to see the differences uh, in the answers you are saying. What is Microsoft? Microsoft, what is Microsoft? Simple question, simple answer. So what is Microsoft? If someone who doesn't know anything like a at our home, our mom doesn't know anything about IT, but she she saw that name in some advertisement and she asked, what is Microsoft? What do we say answer? It is a company, isn't it? Then definitely out of curiosity, oh, is it, is it a company? What kind of company is it? She will ask. Then you will say, yeah, it is a software company, IT company. Oh, is it an IT company? Okay, so what kind of IT company is it? Yeah, it is about some product based company. Oh, is it a product-based company? Okay, what kind of products are they selling? Then you can sell, yeah, they are selling Windows, MS Office, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, Microsoft SQL, so many. Oh, is it? Okay, among that, uh, uh, what is the best, most best-selling uh, uh, product from that company? You can see all these things. Similarly, she asked, what is Apple? What is it? I mean, not about our eating Apple, I'm saying that. Same, our iPhone, Apple. Right. Basically, it is also a company, right? Exactly. See, the exact answer, the right answer, we should be able to frame for anything what we are learning, uh, what we are exploring, what we are finding, team. It may, it, it may look a little funny, but 
see when lmn is basically wanted to know something you should you should be able to define that in a very precise way similarly the question is what is sap now you tell me team what do you say you see earlier these answers were not there it's a company products uh, business modules business software we are talking all the things uh, honestly those are all maybe the lateral story which are not relevant to this part first sap is a company a company registered company what is reliance a company what is tata tata is a car or tata is a power or tata is a steel what is tata or tata is a tcs it's a company group company multiple groups are there inside sap is a company not us based company not indian based company european based company german based company a company established in 1970s in germany so when a company starts every company will have certain you know objectives for them to do the business company anybody will establish to do the business what business do they wanted to do what business for doing what business have they started that company they started that company for developing and selling some software products that's it as like microsoft why microsoft started so uh, so why apple started apple not started actually for developing software and selling in the market apple started actually for manufacturing devices where that's not the target like sap as a company sap doesn't have any interest actually in selling any phones sap doesn't have interest in manufacturing any cars they don't want to manufacture cars they don't want to manufacture phones but apple is interested in that why not apple not selling so many products software products as like microsoft in the market of course that is not their area of interest that's not their area of interest that's not their, that's not their area of interest team they wanted like apple is basically from the beginning itself they wanted to give the best of the age devices to the people consumer goods about like ipods initially they started with and from there on you know the journey uh, where it is today on on their apple iphone at right? one of the best one of the best they wanted to give the best in the market no matter what no as many companies as came into this smartphone industry smartphone industry still everyone feel proud once the moment they have the apple iphone in their hand even there are phones which are even costlier than apple iphone like galaxy S24 and etc etc, but still, Apple iPhone is Apple iPhone. They set that benchmark. They set that trend. They wanted to be the best. Similarly, SAP also the same. Microsoft also the same. There is nowhere other operating system than Windows in the world. For last 30 years, more than that, Microsoft is ruling this world with their Windows operating system, personal operating system. there are more than 200 operating systems available in the market today but it when it comes to the personal computing of course ios is there from apple but only supported for apple manufactured devices only as like one more interesting personal uses operating system here i am not talking about the server level operating systems but personal use operating system when it comes to why there is like when you go to your shop to buy a laptop whether you buy a lenovo laptop or dell laptop or hp laptop in all of that the only common operating system you are finding is windows the highest revenues microsoft is generating only on top of their windows only then why not no other company developed an operating system as a competition to windows that's not that easy and microsoft made it that's it why not there is no other competitor for apple, apple iphone they made it like that only that's all. the brand the dedication the effort they put in the research they put in the investments they made on that what made them like unique unique in the world as like windows similarly sap also as a company when they started their objective is to develop the world best class business softwares now last year only sap has completed 50 years of the journey 1973 they started so they have completed their 50 years right 50 years journey where all this 50 years of time as a company sap focus is on 
giving the best of the best industry solution, best of the best business software, business applications to the business industries. They have no other interest in making anything, doing anything, this and that, like X Xbox games. They can also do that. They don't want. That's not their area of interest. So as a company, SAP, as like any other IT companies like Microsoft, like Oracle, right? Like Cybase, like so many. As I said, they wanted to develop some best of the best business applications for helping the companies to operate their business transactions. Why? Is it so special? Yes, team, exactly. Because business, when it comes to business, business is always about a very complex uh, activity. Lot of departments will be there inside a business, in a business. Lot of, uh, you know, transactions will take place every minute, every second. Uh, those are called enterprises, very big organizations, very big uh, operations. For example, there is a small uh, shop store, uh, some stationery shop, and uh, he is selling about some books, pens, okay, and uh, other stationery goods. So today, how much how much of sales uh, done? Maybe in that uh, store, uh, the shop owner and uh, to help him out, another boy will be there. Only two. So two people are working in that shop. They are getting their monthly salary. So how much stock is there in their shop and how much is sold out and on that day, how much of sales happened and how much stock still left over and uh, should he place any orders because uh, all the uh, Parker pens are getting over. Now he has to place an order right to the suppliers that uh, because all the existed goods are already sold out. So he wanted to still even he can maintain all his business uh, just by uh, in an Excel sheet or in a in a small book, he can note down the things and still even he can able to operate his business. But that's not the scenario with an enterprise. Enterprises means very big organizations, very huge organizations, huge amount of processes are taking place in terms of their manufacturing, sales, procuring goods and employees, their salaries and uh, their revenues, their expenditures, their assets and whatnot. Then, in order to manage their business, execute their business, they need one of the best software without which they cannot do, they cannot able to operate their business comfortably. The moment they are not able to execute the transactions effectively, uh, when they are not able to track things, when whatever is happening in their business, how can they run their business? There is no point of uh, running their business. Let us take about some company like Maruti, Maruti Suzuki, or let's take Hyundai company. Hyundai is actually manufacturing cars in India and selling the cars or MG Motors. Importing the raw materials, assembling the things here and selling. How many cars they are selling? How many cars every day going for service centers for the, doing servicing? How many spare parts they are, they are replacing uh, in every car that is coming for the service station? How many employees are working for them in, in their sales unit? And uh, how much of material they are buying, raw materials they are importing and then they are selling? the taxation, their employees, their salaries. How do they manage all these things? Will they do it in an Excel sheet or will they do it with uh, any software application which they can buy in the market for 10,000 to 20,000 bucks? No way. Professional applications are required. Professional softwares are required. Those softwares are called, so those softwares are called enterprise ERPs, ERP products. Uh, let me tell you this. I will give you some examples. Windows, uh, iOS, and OS2, and uh, Unix, Linux. What are all these? Data operating systems. Operating systems. They're all operating systems. So one is more powerful, one is personal, but anyhow, they're all operating systems. And do you know what is an operating system does? Operating system is basically letting the platform in your computer and making your computer get operate and that operating system will let you the rest of the applications to run like windows your, your laptop will get boot will get boot up and then you can install certain applications on top of windows and you can use them similarly c c plus plus java dot net uh, abap python what are all these programming languages so programming languages is again a different category. They're all intended for developing some programs, 
developing new applications and then use them. Similarly, SQL, uh, Oracle, DB2, MaxDB, MangDB, uh, MangoDB, what are all these? These are all databases. So again, databases are again different group of, uh, so many database products are there in the market, but they're all intended for the same. They're all database management tools, uh, database management software. Use it for what purpose? For capturing some data, store the data in the tables and uh, retrieve the data in a more secured way. So that is all the activities of uh, generally a database software system. Now for my company, now I started one enterprise here. So maybe some uh, one car manufacturing company I started, a very big company uh, where thousands of people, lab or engineers, manufacturing, they're working. Multiple plants are there in India and uh, we are uh, importing, we are buying a lot of raw materials. And after that, we are manufacturing some goods. Finally, we are selling that goods to our uh, dealers and dealers selling that goods in the retail market. That is all. So for my company to operate my day-to-day -day transactions, what is called my day-to-day -day transactions? My sales orders, my purchase orders, my deliveries, my invoices, my material stock, my plant data, my production orders, everything. They're all my business transactions. To manage them, to enter that data in the system, to store the data in the system, and to retrieve how many sales orders created in the last three days. Among that, especially in South India, especially from Chennai and Bangalore and Hyderabad, from these three cities only, what is the total value of the sales, sales orders that are generated in the last three days of that? My requirement can be anything. I just wanted the data just to come like this in fraction of seconds. Who will do this for me? In an Excel, should I sit and do the filterings and uh, uh, drop the calculations and do the calculations? No way, it cannot be. We need some software for doing all these activities. Organizing my enterprise operations, managing my enterprise data, managing my enterprise transactions, I need one software. That software is called ERP. So being the owner of this particular company, now I am, now company started. To operate my company, I need one software. I don't want operating system. I don't want a programming language. I don't want a database. What I want here, Tim? I want one product, you know, that is called ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. All the products are called ERPs. There are so many ERPs available in the market. Now I came out and I started searching for, searching for what? What I'm, what I'm planning to buy now? Best ERP. Best ERP. I wanted one ERP. See team, ERP means I wanted one programming language. Am I searching for best programming language? No. Am I searching for best database? No. I am searching for a product to operate my business. That product category, what type of, what is that type called? That type is called ERP. I am looking for one best ERP so that I can spend the money, I can buy that, and I can use that for my company operations. In that search, I came to know, oh my God, 30, 40 ERP products are there in the market. Microsoft also selling one ERP product. Don't say MS Office, MS Office is not ERP product. Microsoft is selling one ERP product. Oracle company selling one ERP product. Bond company, Cybers company, Salesforce company. So many companies are selling ERP products. So I can buy any one of the ERP product to operate my business. Some ERP products are very cheap, very less cost. Some ERP products are very costly. Then what should I buy? Which should I buy? That is definitely a mission critical decision. The reason is a lot of factors we need to consider. What is the cost of that product? If I buy that product, for example, Microsoft is selling that ERP product. Oracle also as a company 
what is oracle same company and it is ours and what not so many cybers and so many what is this, what is this listing when i entered into the market when i started looking for erp product then i understood that all these companies are selling erp someone's erp is low cost someone's erp is more cost then i started looking at it because ultimately it should help me out to operate my business not matter of the cost but is it to what level will it fit to my business needs to operate my organization requirements what kind of organization my company is what kind of requirements do i have if i buy microsoft company's erp will it able to satisfy all my needs will it able to fulfill all my requirements i found that there are certain things not available in microsoft erp then i said no 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 i don't want to buy microsoft erp but let me check will oracle company's erp product will fit to my business no because of certain things as not available there but you wanted that for example your search ended here only you decided that oh absolutely this is the this is what i am looking for i don't want anything more whatever i am looking for all of that can be done by using this product and also have coming out in my affordable cost i will go and i will buy that then i buy an erp product from microsoft company so company is microsoft what i bought from microsoft did you buy an X, xbox erp software one erp software what is the software name from microsoft you will buy for every software there should be some name microsoft is selling windows ms office sql server like that every software they will name microsoft azure etc etc dynamics so dynamics 365 is a erp product available from microsoft generally mid size companies with about certain sales processes procurement and finance operations they can do they can manage that but about plant about uh, hr operations about payrolls and about lot many things they are not available there in microsoft erp so even if we buy microsoft erp product which is there in the market in the name of dynamics 365 we can use that but still 100% it is not addressing all your company requirements similarly i found the gaps as such with aragil company barn company erp and finally when i went there i just got amazed by looking at things what are available in sap's erp product as your best smartphone search will end up with apple iphone mostly for most of the people still some people don't like a, a apple iphone that is their personal wish team but majority i am talking about as 90% 80 to 90% people's search will end up to have the best smartphone in their life as their search finally will go and end up with the apple iphone the companies who wanted real who are looking really the best of the best product for operating their business i'm sure their search will end up with the sap products sap crp because of their predominant control because of their excellency because of their proven track record because of their dedication that is the reasons more than 75% of the global enterprises are today relay and operating their business transactions on sap's erp so that that figures itself is showing what is their overall existence occupancy in the erp industry so that is the story about sap erp team okay if you buy sap erp what is the product name okay team finally for my company for my uh, manufacturing automobile manufacturing company i decided to buy who's who software i decided to buy sap software so uh, i went to sap company and i told them 
SAP people, I am buying your ERP. I, I saw that, but I was not convinced with other ERPs and I'm buying your ERP. I will pay the amount and they sold me that ERP product. I will bring that series, I will install that software in my servers and I will get start use that. But what is that product name you bought from SAP? What is that ERP product name? Microsoft is the company. From Microsoft, what you bought? You bought one ERP product. It is category. And what is the product name? Dynamics 365. Is it a database or is it a ERP product? It is an ERP product, right? Similarly, SAP as a company, I bought an ERP product from them. Earlier, we used it to buy a product in the name of R3. Long ago. So they used it to sell a product called R3. Like Rajmouli taken the movie RRR. Similarly, they named that product as R3. Earlier, before that, R1, R2 were also there. But R3 was a very big success, huge success. And R3, they used it to sell in 1990s. So if you go to SAP and if you ask them, please, what is your ERP product? They use it to sell you a product. The product name is SAP R3. And after a while, with few more editions, the product got changed to ECC version number five, then ECC six, etc. So in the year 2000s time frame, if you go to SAP, and if you wanted to buy SAP CRP, they stopped selling R3. Why would they? That is a little older version. And they started selling ECC6. So the product got renamed with a lot many features, a lot many uh, advancements within that. Again, over a period of time, that, that product now, nowadays, if you go and if you ask SAP, I wanted to buy your ERP product, then they will sell you a product called So this is how the product journey has taken place. Now for everything you have the abbreviations. Now you tell me team, what is S4HANA 2023? If someone asks you what is S4HANA 2023, what will you say? You are saying S4HANA is the latest ERP product from SAP. Does that mean is SAP selling other products also along with S4HANA? Yes. This is only one type of product that is ERP. Is Microsoft selling only Windows? No way, right? They have multiple products in the market from Microsoft for different, different uh, purposes. SAP also selling so many products. What is this? among that? What is S4HANA 2023? Okay, 2023 keep it aside version number. What is S4HANA? S4HANA is the latest ERP product from SAP. Then what is ECC? What do you answer for ECC? What is ECC? What do you answer to him now? So ECC 6 was your previous or little older ERP product from SAP. So this is my S4 HANA. An ERP product. The latest ERP product. Earlier in this place, we used it to have ECC, right? So does that mean that SAP is only selling uh, S4 HANA? Nothing else more? What else are the other products we have from SAP team as per your knowledge and understanding? We have SAP BW, BW, 
field class. And we have, yeah, earlier SAP SRM. Nowadays, we have replaced that one with the uh, Ariba, of course, but SAP SRM and many more. Yes, zero. Many more as such. And among this, intentionally, I made this S4 on a little bigger. You know, that box also, I made it a little bigger. That oh well, because this is very important. That's the reasons we also call it as like core. Sometimes you will find this one also as like core. You know the meaning of core, right? Center, important. The core functionality, the core business operations about your master data, about your sales, about your procurement, finance, and the day-to-day -day transactions, operations, data completely will be managed by s Again, that doesn't mean that once if you buy the license of s nothing else more is required. Our organizations are not like that as such. As I told you, enterprises are, uh, uh, you know, engaged with so much of uh, complexity. They will be having so much of uh, requirements. And uh, if you, if you, if you eventually come to know uh, the entire company alone will not run only on SAP solutions also. Along with SAP solutions, they will be using so many non-SAP solutions also. And again, you will get hurt. Why, why, are, they, why are they using non-SAP solutions? Because for certain areas, there is no solution from SAP available. SAP is not making that. And definitely, I must buy certain non-SAP solution only for that. SAP is also not making that and selling that for that area to take up. For example, Though I have SAP S4 HANA, uh, I wanted SRM solution also, supplier relationship management. This is more sophisticated solution, especially for uh, uh, having very effective, you know, supplier relationship management. And when I look for SRM, SRM is a category again, like ERP, SRM is a category. So when I start, when I wanted uh, one SRM solution, again, I have plenty of options. I can buy Microsoft SRM. I can buy uh, uh, SAP SRM. And I can buy, there is one more famous company for SRM. I am not able to recall it. Hmm. Who's SRM address? Very well known SRM. Okay, again, not important night right now. So many SRMs are there. So when I'm looking for SRM, as like before ERP, I will again start my search. I want best SRM, best SRM, best SRM like that. I will again go and check the cost and the functionality of Microsoft SRM. Cybase SRM, SAP SRM. Finally, I decided I wanted to go with Microsoft SRM. Of course, that's my wish, my choice. So S4 HANA, I'm using ERP product I'm using from SAP, but SRM product I'm using from Microsoft. Got it? So one company's landscape will be like this. So these are all various SAP products. And uh, SAP Ariba, uh, SAP SuccessFactors, and uh, SAP field glass kind of uh, new year solutions. I will keep it a uh, little aside and I will keep them uh, in some uh, different color team. Uh, why I made them like this, I will tell you the reason. Usually, all these products uh, you will buy, you will install that uh, in your server. First, you will buy one server also, you will install that in, in that server and you will use that system. So, these are all locally available for you. But certain solutions like Ariba, Success Factors, uh, as I said, like these are all new age solutions. So, they're all cloud based solutions. So, there is nothing to get installed anything in your local servers, in your local machinery that are all available directly in the cloud. You have to pay the license cost, and you can start using them. You can start accessing them from your browser. So no deployment, no installation, no configuration. I mean, configuration in the sense, you nothing need to be done from your end part. They are completely cloud-based solutions. You will pay the amount, you will pay the license cost. You will subscribe to that, and then you will start use that. Now, within this, what is the need of our ABAP? Why we are coming to this journey? If you look at most of these products, not only about SAP S4 HANA, 
SAP SRM, SAP CRM, SAP APO, SAP PW, and whatnot. Many, many, many more. I can list out more than 200 products. SAP IS retail is there, SAP oil and gas is there, SAP RFIX is there. What not? So many, so many products. Among that, this is one, but of course, one important product. All these products, product means what? Some software product. Right? Not about a wooden product or not about a plastic product. It is a software product. So software product means obviously every one of us knows that that product is made by writing some line, by writing some coding. Behind every product, behind every application, there will be some coding. By writing some coding only, one application will come out and all that applications, if you group together, that itself is called as a product. So individual tiny applications together, we call it as like a product. And the, each of that application is developed by writing some coding. Then what is the coding that SAP used for writing all these applications? That is called your ABAP. So ABAP as their programming language, because SAP was very particular, they don't want to use other languages, whichever available by that time in the market. But because they know that what type of products they are, they are, they are planning to uh, you know, produce and uh, sell in the market, to develop that kind of products, whatever features that are required in a programming language, they made all of them injected in that. And they made SAP ABAP as such a programming language, a very powerful, robust programming language, especially for developing business applications. Why, why so special about ABAP? You know, ABAP is such a language which is fully designed. So that ABAP language born. So the purpose of that language is basically about to develop the business applications. What is so special about business applications? So certain things are very crucial about business applications. Number, number one, volume. Always business applications will process lakhs of records at, 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 any, at any moment, right? The volumes are very high. And quicker response, the data, the queries, the operations has to be performed so faster. Otherwise, I cannot able to, if customer waits in the queue for every one person, if I'm taking five to 10 minutes time to create one single invoice, the people line will end up till uh, evening also even, I cannot able to complete all my orders. Speed, robustness, and security, security of the data, security of the applications. And all these things are very, very special characteristics which are required for a program and internationalization. That particular language should develop the applications which will support multiple languages so that people from Germany, people from China, people from Japan, people from India and US also can able to operate the applications in their own local languages. So all these features should be there. All these capabilities should be there to that kind of program language you are using. What is that language? ABAP. SAP made that ABAP language as such. And after that, they started developing all these business products so successfully, and it is proven. Then, when SAP is using ABAP language and developing all these products, what is our need? Why should we learn ABAP language now? Same purpose team. These products are Yes, you're right. Your question is very valid. These products are made with ABAP language only. I agree. These products are directly sold to customers and customers can directly use them. But again, there is a challenge. As we have been discussing from the very beginning about the complexity of enterprises, companies are very, it is, it is beyond your imagination at, at this level of your experience, you will not uh, be able to visualize that also till. Enterprises are so complex. So these products, 100% will not fit to their requirements. There will be some need to, you know, tweak that applications, do some alterations, adding some more additional things in that applications in order to make that applications fully fit to every company's exact requirements. Because no company will do the things, will do the transactions as like other companies. For example, if you look at uh, State Bank of India, ICICI, Access Bank, Kotak Bank, they're all banks only. They're all same, doing the same job, banking the sector only. But if you go and see their internal process, even that money, that the deposit uh, 
chalana form format itself will be different from a bank to bank their internal processes transactions everything will do on their own specific way so this product though all of them bought this product but that product once again need to be undergone through certain changes before they can use that without that changes made that products they cannot able to use it which they don't like that then our existence come into picture but who will do that for example i am the enterprise owner right i'm the entrepreneur and uh, i started a company and i bought sap as for hana which is completely developed it is completely developed product as for hana is a ready made product to use which i bought it from sap but can i go and use it directly means i cannot because certain changes are required in that deal according to our business needs then i will ask to sap hey, can you please do these changes then sap will say sorry we don't have time you please reach to one of the service partners they will do the changes whatever you need oh is it then who are the service partners then sap will say you please go and talk to tcs infosys pipro deloitte what not then being the owner of the company i will call to tcs hey i bought sap as for ana but i wanted some changes in that can you please help me out by deploying your team so that they will do the changes whatever i need so that i can use and after that in case i need even further your support in case if there are any issues coming up in case if there are any further changes required then also i will utilize your services that's fine we are a service company we are here to serve you we will provide the service and we will cost for the same so being a, so i as an entrepreneur i made an agreement with tcs so tcs will do all the changes in my s4 ana and i will get start to use that but how tcs is doing by making all of you assigned to that project because you are the people who can do the changes what i want you are the people above skilled people who can understand the standard coding and modify that coding according to my requirements and you are the people who can able to develop some of the new applications according to my requirements which are not there in s4 hana that is the story for what we are learning as a pip as a programming language as a proprietary programming language of sap which we use it is not a open source language like java python and others it is a proprietary programming language sap invented that and it is used only within sap environments so why we are learning about same job whenever there is a ready made stuff certainly alterations are required for example when you go to a shop and when you buy a jean so you are not stitching it it is a ready made when you buy the jean definitely that will not fit 100% for you the length of the jean is little high little more etc you need to alter the alter, alter that length the waist size you need to you may you may have the requirement to alter that and there will be some more alterations which are required and all that alterations we are doing exactly to make that fit to you again the company cannot do that alteration right for you the service provider for that alterations to do that alterations they do charge something certain things are free certain things are chargeable same thing same story here as well abap born in 1970s java born in 1980s so when abap started playing the game even java was not there in the world java not even born by that time all right that java born after the ifa software object oriented uh, uh, programming principles are developed and introduced so by birth by birth java born as a object oriented language object oriented features are certain features so so many languages all the new, all latest languages will do support that but uh, if you look at the older languages like pascal cobol you know those even it, it it was not there there was no such concept uh, in the market uh, i mean in the universe called object oriented programming that object oriented programming concepts were even not introduced 
were not there, no, were, were not in the existence by the times when these languages were there. So that's why all these languages by born, they were procedural languages. Java, C++, by birth, they were object-oriented languages. Because object-oriented uh, features will increase the efficiency of coding, will increase in the execution of the application and maintenance. That's the reasons eventually SAP people also injected that features in ABAP. Initially when ABAP born, ABAP was a procedural programming. Why it born as a procedural programming? Because that time that was the only way, that was the only style we had. There was no concept called object-oriented programming in 1970s because those principles are, are created in 80s. Then eventually they have made ABAP language also because over the period of time, always continuous changes will take place, right? So ABAP also became object-oriented programming uh, by year 2000 around, uh, it become like from NetWeaver uh, 7.0 by 7.0. It is introduced from web application server 6.10 version onwards. So, so that you can see from R3 4.7. Before that, it was not there. So eventually, now this is now ABAP is absolutely a complete object-oriented programming language, 100 percent as like Java. And many more. So both languages are have their own set of advantages, sets, and other things. Too. So that is the Story for which we are learning this ABAP team. So once if you learn ABAP, you are a technician. You will become a technician. These are all the cars sold by SAP. Being a technician, let the repair come anywhere. You can go and you can fix that because you are a trained technician and these are all the cars. So be you. So your company is basically Offering services only, repair services only we are offering. We are not manufacturing the cars. Try to understand the difference. TCS is not manufacturing the cars. Like if you think all these are the cars, right? SAP already made these cars. Sell the cars to customers. Customers are using that cars. But in every car, certain changes are required. It will bring that car to the garages like us. And we do that alterations we do that fixes as they wanted left side steering we will remove and we'll put it in right side steering no we don't they will ask like that but we will tell them no that's not the right way of doing that is where we are expertise that is where we are providing the consultant services you think that steering should be there no no steering should be here only that is a rule you don't know it should be there only whatever is possible whatever is feasible we will make the changes as customer asking for, and we will give that. That car is having four wheels. If the customer is asking remove one wheel and make it only three wheel, we can do that being the technicians, but we will tell them what is the advantages and disadvantages they will experience by making that change. Still, if we, still even if they want, if they're convinced, if we convinced, we will make that change because we are technicians. Being the technicians, trained technicians and expertise, we know, how to fix any problem in the car. We'll fix that and we will give it and we will make our customer happy for that. And what is that technology skill? That is your above as a program language. So for example, if you are a technician about to make some repairs in the car, uh, usually you will use certain tools, right? When you are repairing anything to the car, you will be using certain equipments, right? Some tools are required for you, isn't it? Uh, maybe like some wrenches, uh, some kind of blades. I don't know exact names. Uh, um, and uh, some vacuum uh, based uh, uh, screw fixing machines. Certain tools you will use so that you will dis you will uh, you will completely disassemble and then you will completely uh, assemble. Uh, you know uh, all the spare parts together, and again you can. Uh, uh, make them get spread out everywhere and again you can make them bring it up so for doing all these things you'll be using certain tools you'll be trained on how to use that tools similarly learning ABAP also is all about learning some tools if you know these tools how to use these tools you're a perfect technician 
let's get into the job go and fix the car for example if you don't know how to operate that tool are come on how can i give my car to you to do that repair still even you are not holding that tool correctly if you are not if you wrongly operate the tool instead of removing the screw uh, just to be said that uh, there is a car uh, windshield is there which may get broken the glass may get broken because you are not using the tool sufficiently let's become expertise the more expert you are now i got a very imported car very nice car some changes are required in that to whom will i assign that car okay can you repeat it sir does that mean are you guys not following me no no for for my understanding ah, right no 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 it's okay just follow this team uh, explaining these things actually taking so much of my energy but why am i saying these things still i know there is a purpose so now i got a one order one of the customers bring very latest uh, very costly car he, he brought into my store to do some repairs so to whom will i uh, whom will i assign that uh, to take up the job more than more than experienced or most efficient person right because i am pretty confident on him if you take up the job he will do that he knows again very good experience is very efficient similarly in your abab if i get a task who should i give to does he know how to use that tool very properly is he expert in using that tool yes so yes. learning abap is learning abap is nothing but learning about more tools or becoming a technician and let's learn these tools what are these tools we have we have a tool called abap editor so first uh, when you join uh, here to learn about car repairing first i will give you one screw driver and i will teach you first how to remove the screws and how to fix the screws once you become very good in operating that screw driver then i will take you to the next tool and i will teach you how to hold the tool how to operate the tool more effectively and when to use when to not use for what purpose we should use so when you have to use a wrench in place of wrench if you are trying to do that with screw driver what will happen certain activity you should do with the wrench instead of or with the hammer instead of that you are you are picking up screw driver and you are trying to do that with screw driver what will happen either thing will not get to done in time or it may even it may get done in in worse manner than expected similarly there is other tool called abap dictionary we will discuss what is the use of all these things so then there is other tool about as many tools as you know that much of efficient worker you are efficient technician you are if you know only a few tools i always make them do only those tasks because they don't know the rest of the tools so they cannot take up that activities learning gap up is as such only it is all about getting ready to make the repairs in a car by equipping with these tools we will begin with this one let us try to understand the sap architecture first so once if you know using all these tools where will you do that repair steam where where will you do all the repairs in sap no oh, here uh, as per this side where will in s4 on a core no anywhere in any of these products yes, yes, all anywhere. the You see, because oh, all yes. the all all these products also are written by the same language, right? Correct, correct, correct. Yes. Simple, simple. So you are not learning about for S four, Hana. Team, are you getting me? You are not learning. You are not learning. So it's not that you will only repair uh, only I twenty cars, not about Varna cars, nothing like that. You are once you become a technician, you can able to handle uh, 
Hyundai i20, Hyundai Creta, Hyundai Verna, and uh, Hyundai everything. You are a certified Hyundai technician. Simple. Any car you can take up. They all follow the similar uh, engineering guidelines. Similarly, these are all SAP products. All products are developed by ABAP language. Customers are buying these products. Customer wanted some changes in any of these products. The task will come to you. You will go and you will do that. You are learning a neutral one. You are not learning S4 HANA. You are learning the technical stuff. What is there behind all these products? That language you are learning. As long as the product is written in APO, you want to, in CRM, you wanted to make some changes. Yeah, you can go and you can do that again with your ABAP skills. If you want some alteration to happen on SAP SRM, absolutely, you can go and you can do that. Similarly, everywhere. But majorly, majority of the times, we are learning this ABAP in S4ANA. Always we will think that ABAP is there inside S4ANA. No, ABAP is there in every of these servers. ABAP language is there in all these products. In all these products, in all these servers, ABAP programs are there, ABAP language is there. For example, if you have APO system or if you have CRM server, can you go and learn SAP ABAP? Absolutely, you can learn. For learning SAP ABAP, do I need SQL on a server? No, I need a server where ABAP is existed. If ABAP is existed, I can go and I can learn ABAP from there also. I should we think ABAP is internal part of integral part of S4 HANA. ABAP is part of every SAP server, every SAP product. How the evolution happened? If you look at SAP R3, All right, let's test your knowledge. Here's a question for you. Which of the following is not a feature of ABAP on HANA? Option A, code pushdown. Option B, code pushdown. Option C, data aging. Option D, graphical user interface. Take a moment to think, and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. Hey there, want to become a whiz at managing supplies? Our SAP ABAP on HANA course is just what you need. You can take it at your speed on our site. In this course, you'll learn all about SAP ABAP on HANA. It's like a toolkit for planning things, from ensuring we have enough products to getting them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need, from the basics to advanced tips. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are pros who've been at this for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students love the course too. Folks just like you have found our course super useful. Best part? It's budget friendly. This amazing chance to learn won't cost you much. Ready to become a SAP ABAP on HANA Pro? Sign up on our page now. For more details, head to Zarentech's website. So, so team, you looks like this is our server. Server in which you have installed SAP R3 or SAP ECC. So by installing that, what will happen in your server? Lot of programs will come and available for you, for your users. Like F5, like VM. So by having your SAP R3 or ECC 6, what will happen? Once if you install, what will you get? See, you bought some, you went to a shop, you bought Microsoft MS Office, you bought. So the you, you bought MS Office, you paid 5,000 rupees, they gave you one CD. You bring that CD to your home, put it in your laptop, install the MS Office. Once if you install MS Office, what will you get in your laptop? 
So MS okay. Office is installed. Okay. MS Office is installed. So you you say, oh, okay, is it completed? If I ask, you will say, yeah, MS Office is installed. Then if I ask you, okay, open MS Office, what will you open? But but I am asking open MS Office now. So MS Office as a package, it is just the name of the package. Inside yes. that you have individual applications, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, MS Access, MS OneNote. There are so many applications like that, and all the all that applications together we are calling as your suit. Similarly, if you install R3 or ECC in a server. You will get all these applications, SD, MM, PICO, MPP, QM, HR, so many modules will be there. Now, what do you want to execute? Some SD transactions, some MM programs, some FACO programs. You can run them, you can open them, and you can use them. Along with that, in the server, you will always find one database also there. So here is one database I'm trying to do. So you must have in the server, you must install one database also, because when you're using SD, MM, FI, a lot of transactions are getting created. Nothing but you are creating some sales orders, purchase orders, then where are all getting stored? They all will getting stored inside some tables. So these are all some tables looks like, but to, to hold the tables, we, need, we always need one database. That also you need that, right? So, Whatever sales orders, purchase orders, inquiries you are creating, all of them will get stored in these tables. But where the tables will reside for keeping the tables in a very secure space, we always need one database system. So this is called RDBMS. So normally in your server, you will be having the setup like this. You will install SAP R3 or ECC, by which you will get a lot of business modules. And along with that, you need to have one database also. Inside the database, you will be having a lot of standard tables. So that the tables also created at the time of installing your ACC. Now, if you open SD transactions, MM transactions, the relevant data what you are posting will go and get saved in all these tables. This is how we use it to work on for some time. But over a period of time, you know what happened to you? This is the innovation taken place. Companies, their choice. They want to go with Oracle, they can go Oracle database. If companies want to go with Microsoft SQL database, they can go. But these databases, licensing cost and performance wise, and because of some other dependency factors, SAP thought, SAP has decided to come up with their own database instead of depending on others. That was the time they made this SAP HANA. So HANA has SAP's own database. Actually here I'm, lead, I'm limiting myself only as like a database team. HANA is more than a database. It is a complete full length platform actually. We should not uh, limit our definition only with the database. It is more than database. I will slowly introduce. But for your easiest understanding, I'm trying to frame it as simple as possible. So instead of go for Oracle server or SQL server or any other third party database systems, SAP is saying that, hey, why don't you go, why don't you buy our own database? This is more powerful, 10 times performance difference it can bring you when comparatively your Oracle and SQL server. Oh, is it? Very happy. And that too, it is also coming from SAP. Okay, and we will go with SAP HANA. Then people started replacing their Oracle, that Oracle they got replaced with this HANA database. If it happened like that, if any customer who is using SAP ECC, with all the modules, but it is not running on Oracle or SQL. It is running on which database here now? On HANA. This particular server is called Suite on HANA.
this particular system is called yeah sri and can i ask a doubt yeah one second i will hmm. i will summarize this and i will but still sap is not happy because because of the innovation they brought in with hana so much of power is added but still why we are using the same old ecc program because all these all these ecc programs are programmed you know according to oracle i mean according to some third party databases all these programs are not really programmed by keeping hana in mind and sap thought now this is the time even our programs also should be rewritten our programs also should be recoded by leveraging the power of hana because what hana is saying that hey still even i can do much more things for you why are you, but your program only written in such a bad old style so that i am not really working out i am not able to give my complete potential to you can you rewrite that code according to uh, hana standards even even much more already you are seeing the difference in the performance because of changing your database from oracle to hana i can uh, i can add even more power i can add even much more to you are you ready then sap did that sap has that ecc code that ecc code line completely simplified lot of tables removed lot of application coding has been changed which is completely recoded product it is just not the name change from ecc to s4 hana but the complete simplified recoded database tables program programming statements by using the complete power of hana and this this product we are calling as sap s4 hana so the old customers who are still using ecc today they might be on oracle or sql server or they might have upgraded their database to hana but still their product is ecc this particular setup is called suit on hana but all the recent licenses latest one people will go for sap s4 hana which is just not only the rebranded of sap ecc but also a completely recoded new code line a new code line has been implemented here for all the modules by leveraging the power of hana this is introduced in the year 2015 from there on every year they are coming up with one after one versions and today we are using the uh, customers are using around modules are same above is same but this particular above is having much more powerful features we should learn that we should code that also while writing the code also we should keep it in mind that our programming our coding our select statements everything are working according to hana if you can do that way you can see the efficiency in your code as well all right so this is how the innovation hierarchy taken place yes this now it is open for questions it is a it is a database product from sap database component from sap we can understand like that without install this first they will install database they will get the license for this first they will get the license from oracle or sql also they will install mm -hmm. the database first after they install the database they will install r3 or ecc during that time only all these uh, default standard tables everything will get created in your database mm -hmm. okay see any sap server any sap server if you wanted to have it compulsory in that server you must have one database because all the records are getting stored inside the tables and inside the database only so database is an integral component of that product compulsory we must have one database and everything will get installed and stored only inside the database whether you are using a older databases or hana database depends on the product you are setting up for example you are going with microsoft srm whereas if you wanted to sorry not microsoft srm i'm sorry sap srm so still depend on the srm version you are making whether you wanted to go oracle as a database or hana as a database if you have the options you can go with it but if you are installing s4 hana 2022 still if this database if i wanted to go with oracle there is no that option sap 
stop with that. No, you don't have that freedom to choose. Compulsory, this database also should be Hmm, should be huh. no. it will not support it will not it will not work on the other databases but still certain products are there where your customer is having their option uh, if if their product supports it can be installed on top of oracle or it can be installed on top of hana for example i wanted to go for ecc still i have that option i can run my ecc either on top of oracle or i can run my ecc on top of my HANA database. Got it? Oh, yes. I have both options here. So this type, so team, this is not only about S4 an architecture, I mean to say, any SAP server, SRM server, AP1 server, BW server, any SAP server will work like this. In all these servers, internally, a route will be there. So that ABAP engine is only letting all these programs running over there. ABAP as an engine, as a, as a platform, as a language in which all these programs are written are today executing on top of this ABAP engine only. That ABAP engine, that ABAP features only we are learning to make any modifications in these programs. It is the same architecture you will find everywhere, in, irrespective of the product we are talking about. No matter what ECC or S4 or R3, ABAP remains the ABAP. But this ABAP is more powerful than this ABAP because this is the ABAP which is there in ECC server, might be a little older ABAP, but the ABAP which is there in your S4 or server is the latest ABAP. The differentiation will come as such. And for this training course, there is one. So once if I, let me take this one directly so that I can say somewhere. So there is one SFK as for ANA server. So how do we connect it to this uh, server and how do we uh, write the coding team? There are two options we have. Nowadays, number one, in your system, you can have SAP GUI. SAP GUI like a browser, like a browser, like, like a browser, it is a client application. So from here, by using your SAP GUI, you can connect it to your SAP server, you can connect it to this server. Then you can start writing your ABAP programs. You can you can do start alterating your programs. And nowadays we have this option called Eclipse. From Eclipse also, we can able to do the developments of ABAP. We can able to write your ABAP coding, ABAP applications, get done. You will connect here this server and same ABAP you will learn there also. Your applications also can be done. Normally, Eclipse only from, from the ABAP side only I'm talking about, but from SAP GUI, once if you connect so many transactions, applications, everything you can run there, but only from coding perspective only, we can do connect from Eclipse and we can do write ABAP, only from ABAP point of view, I'm saying. So you will have an SAP server from SAP GUI, you will connect it to that server, and then from there on, you will start learn how to write ABAP code. We will see how to start our ABAP journey both from SAP GUI and also we will understand things from Eclipse. And uh, once if I return that application, just you think like this thing, I have created one new program here, not standard program. I have created one, you just think like this. 
this small orange one using above skills so i have developed a new program these are all standard programs leave that one but i have created a new program here with my own above skills okay that program is written that program is ready how if i run this program if i test this program where it will get run it will run in the server and output will come right output will come in the recipe gui you will see the output of that program the result of the program sometimes if that program is written in such a way like a web application then that program output will go to browser also it will get done from the browser as well so these are the multiple places we do connect to your server so once if you have the server now for this training we have as far on a 2022 server we will share you the credentials how to log in most of you people know that because you are all from here and there from sap background only uh, some are new who never log in into any sap system also before we will first connect it to one server so sap gui is just something like browser just something like eclipse it is also one client tool which you can download and install in your laptop i think it is already there even if it is not there we can download it and it will get installed in 5 minutes time not not more than that but this is the software which is required to connect it to any sap server no matter what as for an srm crm as for an any server we can connect as such learning app is all about learning tools how many tools are there as such or 250 tools are there as much as you are able to learn that many you are going to learn in this course we are learning hardly about 7 to 8 to different types of tools very lengthy introduction yeah. i know but uh, it is required difficult for me also to speak continuously for two hours so. but uh, always day one sessions would be like that only to set the path to set my way of explanation and to make the understanding approach to bring everyone aligned to one one common style of because you and me both should be in the similar phase and in the similar sync so that my explanation will make you also get aligned to that and will give better results so for that usually this is the um, model only on the day one it will go more about talking less about doing but eventually from tomorrow notes will be spending more on the system only of course along with some good explanation any suggestions team from any one of you so we discussed about the background of sap the various products of sap and the uses of various products and one of the product is sap s4 hana like sap srm sap crm sap bw sap apo sap is retail so many products and the backbone of all these products is the same language as app language so customers will buy that products but certain missing applications you will have the requirement to develop newly and some of the existing applications you need to do some changes in that to make them uh, fit to their business needs for that we are learning this app skill to practice this app you need to connect it to one of the server in which app is available so for this training we are taking s4 on a server when i say s4 on a server we do use and for that server we can connect from sap gui eclipse from browser various aspects so we will see uh, advantages and everything so normally in your uh, personal system you will have sap gui installed so sap gui looks like this on your desktop it will appear as like a shortcut icon in your programs you do install that sap logon it will come like this logon pad just hardly some mb space only so this is one kind of like a browser like a browser a client tool to connect to one sap server so that one we are using here sap gui so once if i go there as i said my company might be using uh, so many server stream so many sap servers will be there you just think like srm server crm server pw server apo server so and so so and so so and so as such 
how I wanted to connect it to some ECC server. How, how do we maintain this uh, details? Your uh, IT admin will give you the details. Now you wanted to connect it to one more server. You can add that server details also. Click on a new. For suppose SRM server. About that SAP server, there will be one system ID. This is a three character word. I'm, I'm creating some dummy one now. See what I'm trying to do is that now today you wanted to connect it to one different SAP server. About that server, some details will be shared with you by your administrator, by your IT admin. So just you have to add one more entry here about that server. Already so many server list is there, but how do you add one more entry here? You will go to create here any description, my SRM or SRM server, your choice. It is fully yours, right? SRM server. About that system, there will be one system ID. That system ID you will provide. About the about that server, that means this one. This one we are talking about. So this this if you if you think this is your SRM server to connect it to this server in SAP GUI. First, there's a server details we are feeding in your SAP GUI. This server is there somewhere in your in your uh, company network. Whereas, so these things, so these things are your uh, client tools. All these green color things are your, what is there in your laptop, in your personal laptop. So first, your SAP GUI should know the details of your SRM server that we are adding here. Some description, that system ID, who will give that? Your IT team will give that. Instance number, that server will have some number. It is a two digit number, maybe 00 or 01. They will give that, you will enter and uh, router still not required. That server definitely will be there in some IP address. Isn't it? Every server will be there in some IP address, right? Like 192.168.72.84, something like that. Uh, some IP address will be there in which that particular server is hosted. Okay, so that uh, I'm creating some dummy that the details I will enter here and then I will say finish. Now you see, along with my other servers, now my SRM server also listed here. Whether is that the details really correct or not, if it is really correct, you will able to connect to that server. If it is wrong, it will not let you to connect. So how, how do I create it? I click properties. So these are the details, server description, that system ID, some instance number and IP address. So, okay, these three details, if you ask your IT team, they will provide about that server. Uh, like that. Tell me about the instance ID once again. Instance ID means at the time of installation, they will provide one number also. It is a two digit number to represent that uh, uh, application server, basically application server number. There will be multiple application servers also. Then they will give that number as 00, 0, 01, 0 or something like that. So instance number is a uh, two digit identifier of the particular instance of the particular application server of that server. So that will be given at the time of the installation by your, so when your basis people and your IT people is installing this server, during the installation time itself, they will decide what is the system ID, what is the system ID name, and what is the instance number they wanted to give. These two details they will provide at the time of installation of this server and forever they will remain the same. That particular system ID, that instance number only, we are providing here in the SAP GUI. That is what we provided here. So this is system ID and instance number they are using at the time of installation and they are providing to that server. Every server will have different system ID and different instance number. Sometimes so similar instance numbers you will see, but system IDs will be various. Is that clear? Ah, oh, yes, okay, thank you. But anyhow, these two are not anything to do from your end part. These are the, this is like first name and last name of the server. You just think like that. What's your first name and what's your last name? Similarly, the first name and last name of the server. That, that, those are the names which are given at the time of that server creation. As your parents named you, 
the installation person named that server with these two details right so server is created so once the server enter once the server name is enrolled here you can select that you can click on log on it is trying but actually there is nothing at that ip address some dummy ip address i given so as the network not finding anything it will say i'm sorry there is nothing to reach on this address i know nothing will come because this is a something wrong valid address but i have a correct system here one sap as for on a server i have that details so are very correct system id i will share you these details sir. it is already there in your system system details i will share you anyhow to you and the application server ip address everything i given now if that is correct i will double click if i double click it is there definitely it will connect it to that server as well i say which ui so this is a client tool which is required to install in your personal laptop so that from this gui we can connect it to any sap servers once if you know the ip address and details of the server uh, no matter what it is srm server or s4 on a server any server you can able to connect from sap gui so do you need to ask your it team to install browser in your laptop is a browser is anyhow coming as part of uh, the windows operating system microsoft edge google they are there in case if it is not there you will ask your it team to install browser because you are not finding neither google chrome nor uh, uh, microsoft edge in your laptop uh, totally it is missing you will ask them to install they will install that similarly sap gui mostly in uh, for sap users your it team will install that and will provide that in case if it is not there we can ask our it team to install the sap gui but for this training what we will uh, i think i need to double check that i will check that once we are providing you a remote desktop so because of that remote desktop everything already installed there on the remote desktop so from your computer just you only have to connect it to remote desktop rdp and uh, once you connect to the virtual system so that is a like some other personal laptop you are accessing from this laptop so everything is already installed there that you can use for this training i will check that whether you are using the remote desktop or directly you have to install this sap gui in your laptop if that is a case you need to request your it team got it sir yeah similarly yeah but once if you only for the training you are using the remote desktop but once if you are assigned to the project compulsory definitely in your personal system directly sap gui should be installed eclipse also should be installed anyhow browser you will have but these are the three essential piece of software should be there in every one of your systems but not required for this uh, only for this training purpose okay so let us continue team how to log in we are learning now so once if the uh, server uh, so i am connecting to another server so this name is up to my my interest i can any time i can change that uh, uh, name to 2022 something like that i can change so this name any time i can change this is my wish only just the description only this will if i change this sap as for 2026 uh, that does not mean that it is as for 2026 i still need the name nothing more so don't uh, get confused with that name itself this name is your choice so even if I make it as for on a 2022, but maybe it is an SRM server also. Chances are there, just it is a name. But on the IP address, whatever is there, that only you will connect. This is your wish, your own name. Anyhow, as for on a 2022, you can select the exact SAP server what you wanted to connect, and then you can say log on. Yeah, so that is also as for on a 2022 system only, that is right. So here, you will be entering first time you are connecting to an SAP server. You will enter one client number, user ID and password. What is this client number? What is the significance of client number? So by default, it is coming 100. What else are the other numbers will be there? And why are we having uh, uh, so many client numbers? What is the importance of that client? You will eventually understand. We will discuss that very in detail in the next two, three sessions. So for now, let it keep as 100 only. So your user ID and your password, you need to share 
you need to enter over there. Let me try with the user ID I have received, my password. So SAP products are multilingual capable products. So I can log in with the English language, I can log in in Chinese language, Germany language, French language, right? Dutch language, multiple languages if you support. So whichever language option I choose, uh, all my next further screens options will appear in that language only. But as I cannot understand other languages, you know, it's language, we do connect with English. Enter. This is not an error, just one message only. Just say continue. All right, then. so I connected to one SAP server. Again, I'm saying I connected to one SAP server. But which server it is? Look at this picture. From SAP GUI, I connected to one server. Whereas this may be an SRM server, this may be an S4 on a server, this could be anything team which we don't know. From the description, of course, I have seen, but still even or any, it could be anything. From SAP GUI, I just connected here. For example, here in the description, I changed this one to SRM. Remaining details I kept it as this. Now I will select that SRM. I will say log on. I will enter my user ID and password here. Sometimes this information will come. Sometimes this information may not come. So you, can, you cannot rely on this information also. I will enter my user ID and password and I connected. That means have I connected to SRM server? May not. But what is sure about is that I connected to one server. At least that part I'm sure because look at this screen. Once if I get this SAP easy access, once the screen comes like this, fantastic. I connected to one SAP server. Here in this server, any SAP server will come like this only to you. But if you wanted to know, is it really S4 on a installed in this server or SRM installed on this server or ECC installed on this server? If you wanted to know what is the product is there in this mission, in this server, what is the real product is there? You go to system menu, you go to status, and you click on this magnifier icon. And then you come to this installed product versions. So in this server, what is really installed? Yes, S4 HANA on-premise version number 2022 installed in that server. And along with that, there are some other more also installed, some supporting components so, but majorly this server is not SRM server. This is not BW server. This is not APO server. This is S4 HANA on-premise 2022 release version server. So like this, once if you're connected to any server, whatever is there in that server, what are installed in that server, that information first you should find out. How to find out that information team? Go to system, go to status, and click on this magnifier icon. Then go to installed product versions. Which are the products installed in this server? For example, if it is a very big server, they will install multiple products also. Once if I connect it to that server, okay, from SAP GUI, I connected to this server. Uh, after that, why I connected to this SAP as for on a server? From SAP GUI, I connected to the server team. For what purpose have I connected? For creating some sales orders? For creating some purchase orders? It could be anything. My requirement can be anything. Once if I connected to the server, now I wanted to create a new material. For creating a new material, there is a program. If I forgot the program name, at least there is a shortcut. 
that shortcut is mm01 i can go there there i can create a new material if if i wanted to do something belongs to materials i wanted to create one uh, purchase order if i don't know the program name still there is a shortcut code that code is called a transaction code me 21 yen i can enter there then here i got a screen and on this screen i can able to create a purchase order but who developed this application this is a standard application already developed by sap which is part of sap s4 hana it is already developed by using your app language this is an application already there in sap s4 hana server so that you can go and you can start create purchase order okay i will fill all these details finally i will click on the save button then what will happen exactly one purchase order will get created and where is that purchase order data is getting stored that purchase order data will go and store in one table maybe in one table or in two three tables all this data will be get stored in some multiple tables who created that tables even those tables also sap has already created all tables all programs all screens all applications the complete logic everything is already there then what should we do where our requirement comes this is a standard application i have for creating a purchase order but in my company when i am creating a purchase order all these are fine here i wanted two more options actually uh, fixed exchange rate some option is there gr messages some option is there uh, material verification i wanted one more option here and quality check option i wanted just to two more options here our company needs that one also but unfortunately it is not there in the standard application mostly most most of the companies don't want but my company need that we wanted some more options here to come can i ask sap to do that they cannot then who will do that one abapur can do that the abapur can open see all this application right now you are finding but you can see the source code you can see the source code of this application you will go there you will understand the place you will understand the position you will see where all these are written there you can able to add the additional code you can save it finally when i run this program i will be able to see the additional controls whatever i wanted it may be adding up some fields remove removing of some unwanted fields adding some more tabs or when i click on this uh, additional planning something else is coming but i don't want that i wanted it to hide this button i wanted some more controls to be added who can do all these things who can understand the programming written behind this application that programming is your app for that you are learning about but it is not a straight forward task it's not only about the screen change see i will i will modify this screen i will add two more controls here as customer is asking if i select that one also and if i click on save will that two values also will go and store in the table no because earlier that table whatever sap given in that table do i have another two columns also for this duly added new fields no it's not there so i have to my job is not getting done only just by adding two additional fields on the screen i should add two more columns also in the table in the original table where actually this purchase order data is getting stored and i have to modify the code when i click on save button whatever code is running i should go and tweak that code you know to accomplish this particular changes isn't it so i am learning all that skills how to modify the tables how to modify the screens how to modify the code how to understand the code finally how can i make this application perfectly get ready get prepared according to my client wish for that you are learning about 
as a technical guy. Is it clear to everyone, team? Why are we learning above? What is the purpose? Uh, yes. Right. So, where are these tables? There is again another T code. We will go there. We can see all SAP tables, standard tables that SAP has given. So, this is one of the table where usually your purchase order data is getting stored. Now, I have to see one table. Each table will come up with 300, 400 columns. Enterprise enterprise and requirements will be. I'm not going through the list of the tables team. I'm just going through the list of the fields of a table. Normally, we will think that a table means employee ID, employee name, employee phone number, employee city, employee designation over. Table means five columns or six columns, hardly 10 columns. Business entities will not be like that. Business entities will not be like that. If you just for those who are new to SAP, I'm just telling the it is larger than life uh, size team. Uh, normally, when you are talking about a material, just one material uh, in our car showroom, when car comes, a certain screws, uh, one bolt, one single bolt basically. It is one material. What can be the information belongs to one material? So that particular bolt, you know, uh, is represented in the system with some number. Material code 3540. M3540 M means that particular bolt, okay? So every material will be identified by some code number. Code or description. Usually what do we expect that data belongs to one material? that material code, that material description, and about material, what else we will have? Maybe that material maybe will have some weight or that particular material will have some length and breadth. And that material, either we will count in uh, units or we will count in uh, kilos, unit of measurement. 10 kilos of oil, 10 kilos, 10 liters, 10 inches, 10 feet, whatever the unit of measure. What else can be there about the material? To store one material data in SAP system, you know, there are about more than 10 tables are there. What are the 10 tables are doing? They are carrying the data about one material. Do we need 10 tables to store the information about one single material? Why don't we do store the data of that material inside a single table? Because one table is not sufficient. Each table will have 300, 200 to 300 columns. Like that, you will see eight to 10 tables. About, again, all the tables are there for what purpose, you know? Just to hold the data about the material. I'm not talking about purchase orders and sales or sales orders. That much of details will be there about any single entity. Where is that material being maintained? In how many plants we are manufacturing that particular material? In how many storage locations we are maintaining that material? How many bins are contributing to all that material? And what is the quality inspection data that is to be maintained about that material? About material master data and about all the details about that single bolt. This is such examples. Mara is one table. If you open the table, that material number, you see, M A T N R, that material number, these field names, employee first name, employee last name, employee designation, these field names, mostly you will find German keywords, but by description only, we can understand them easily. But this is the name of the table. These are the fields, material number, material description, when that material is created when that material is changed, what is the material type? Is it a raw material or about, to, right? And what is the industry sector it belongs to? What is the material group? Is there any old material number? What is the base unit of measurement of that material? If that material we are ordering in the purchase orders, what should be the quantity? What should be the unit of measurement to be used while placing the purchase orders? Go down, go down, go down. What is this data about? Material weight, material width, material information. What is this data? How many columns are there? 
353 columns are there in this table this is all about the data of one material number material number is the key field here so 353 columns of data about material uh, bolt uh, the m453 material code and is it the only table which carries the data of that material no again that's not the scenario you will go to another table called marci again that material is manufacturing and maintaining at whichever plants suppose our company is having 10 plants but that material may not be maintained in all the plants it is going to be maintained only in some plants which plants contains the details about that material again all the data what we seen before in the mara table that will not get duplicate here this is again a different data completely plant data of that particular material again this table is having 332 columns these are two only again you will go for another table called mrd this is the storage location data once again about that material only about that material within that plant how many storage locations are there in whichever storage locations that material data is again maintainable that the details again this is a table with about 72 columns and many more as such this is all the tables contributing to maintain the data about one single bolt about each material about each material core just this is one simple example only i am telling you team so that you can imagine the sizing of the enterprise operations we have to prepare our mindset also towards that it is not just a programming language about uh, uh, take two numbers and find out which is primary number which is prime number which is composite number take those programming basics we are learning initially to enhance our programming skills but not for developing that kind of applications once if you learn about you are going to apply your skills something like and uh, universal stuff it is something like all together getting into a different world like becoming like an astronaut and uh, flying to space all right so we understood couple of things number one this is your sap s4 on a server and this is sap s4 on a 2022 version we also observed and we have seen there are some tools you see being an abapper we are not learning any other things except these tools this is our area being the technical persons we are going to learn these tools which tools are we learning as i said so many tools within that let's go to abap workbench within that let's go to development abap dictionary already i told you this tool this one this is one tool why are we learning this tool if you want to create new tables if you want to modify any existing tables if you wanted to see the records of tables etc we need this tool so this is a very special tool especially to work with uh, tables Rep do the repairs in the tables see now you have to do some repair where you should do the repair some tire you should repair so when you are working with tire you will be using some kind of so specially designed tools now you have to apply some color to the car body you will be using again another set of tools so above dictionary is one tool we are learning so you can double click on that you can here you can create a new table you can see existing tables you can see the table structure if you know the table name you can enter you can say display you can see the complete table data if you wanted to create a new table let's give you our new table name here and then go for create you can create a new table we will see how to do that
are we working only on tables no there are other areas also like views data types type groups domains search helps log objects various options are here but all this more or less relevant to tables only so completely this is a tool especially for managing your tables related operations what is the tool name here team what is the name of the tool above dictionary above dictionary it's come back if you you can go like this you can go to tools you can go to above workbench development above dictionary tool actually all these tools not all the tools every option in sap will comes up with short code that code itself we call it as t code transaction code just to open that we use that to t code for above dictionary the t code is se11 se11 enter you will come there fantastic above dictionary the t code we understood sc11 for all table or table operations now my requirement is to not a table operations customer asked me do this so purchase order screen is there in the purchase order screen he is asking some another uh, two controls here or another one more button here he is asking some changes to do on this screen so if you wanted to do the screen changes so it is something like painting so you have to you should not use screw drivers and wrenches you have to use some brushes because you have to paint the car body so you have to use some gun spray painting some brushes some tints and some sponges definitely you should get prepared with another set of tools because all together the job is different what is the tool i should i should use I will go there here there are so many tools here 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 or there as such then there is one tool called user interface screen painter see the name itself screen painter it is talking just painting i given general as an example the tool name is called screen painter i will go there i will enter the program name i will enter the screen number i will go for change that entire screen will come here i can modify that screen that entire blue color car i can change to red color car or on the blue color car only certain small small you know orange color bubbles designs i will sticker it on the car body anything i can do i can develop completely new screens also but this is one tool tool name is called screen painter and what is the shortcut t code if you want to open that tool sc41 sorry sc51 sarita is it possible to have any um, place to know the uh, the shortcut code or something actually here itself you will uh, get the shortcut names now nowhere else uh, required to see uh, and some materials also from sap help documentation also you can see that and there is one setting here which will showcase all the t codes belongs to each of these options so uh, where it is that somewhere i forgot the setting here it is So, team, has anyone remembered enabling the T code appearance here? I will. I will show you that team. So, basically, um, if you go here. Or above dictionary is there, no? That uh, iPhone is there. That T code itself will that code. Can, can you check in extras? Uh, extras. Yeah, it will be here only. Extra settings. Yeah, yeah somewhere I forgot that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, Sorry. yeah, yeah. This one, this one, this particular. 
enough. So you see here, Tim, this is the decode, corresponding decode you should use. Similarly, okay, screen I have modified, but modifying the screen alone will not uh, make the job better done. I should uh, do some changes in the coding also. Any coding changes you wanted to do, you have to write the code in this tool, Abap Editor. So Abap Editor is the editor, that white uh, notepad, white background notepad, where you will do write your coding. All your conditions, if conditions, logic, statements, everything. Any coding part, you will do that in the Abap Editor. This is one more tool, as I described here. Abap only, language name itself is Abap. Like Java language, like Java, like C language, like C++ language. Here the language name is, it is also a abbreviated form. We should call it ABAP only, but just it became habitual. People call it, calling the ABAP. 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 This is the language we do write in ABAP editor. Okay. Similarly, if I wanted to develop forms, I will go for form painter. I will use forms development, smart forms, Adobe forms. I will use that for screens. We have already seen SC51 is the T code, shortcut code, or many more as such. Let's begin with the ABAP editor first. So, team, step by step, we came upon. We started first what is SAP? and what type of uh, products SAP is offering. One of the product is ERP, S4 HANA, along with S4 HANA, many other products also there. Companies will buy and use all these things. All these products are written in ABAP. In, in these products, if any changes, customizations required, only you are the only people can go and can do that because you're all, you, you all learned and you're skilled on ABAP. Learning ABAP is nothing but learning tools. So how strong you are in ABAP is all depends on how many tools you can operate. Experienced technician means what? You can able to handle multiple problems. So for example, if you don't know how to use this painting tool, as you cannot apply the paint on the car, you also cannot work on the screens. You can do coding, you can create tables, but you cannot create screens because you did not learn this tool. As many tools as you can go on, it will be like that. So. S4 uh, SAP servers will look like this with set of applications with ABAP language and one database also. So we are working with the S4 HANA server and we connected from SAP GUI to S4 HANA. Once it is connected, I am not interested to see what is there in SG, what is there in MM. I am interested to see what is there in ABAP. That is the area we focused here. And we are talking about. So inside ABAP, ABAP is nothing but some set of tools. We are learning each tool is for different purpose. Some of the tools we started exploring. One of them is ABAP editor. So ABAP editor is a source code editor. You can open the source code of any existed programs or you can develop new programs also team. First, let us begin your journey by writing new programs first, eventually, you will see the code of the existing standard programs also, and you will also learn how to modify that code, etc. Let us begin with the ABAP editor first. So ABAP editor, if you want to open, you can go to the T code SC38. So first time we are going to write a new program. So SAP system already having so many standard programs. If you go to this helper, this is all the names of the programs. These are all standard programs, okay? So thousands of uh, programs you will see. If you, if you go to any of these programs, if you see the code, yeah, this is the code. Some source code you are finding here how they're written. But all these programs are starting with some letters. 
so for your custom programs to limit you for not using any other uh, uh, the program your program name like my my program one so as if we don't want to start with any alphabets so, so any of your program should start with z that is how they restricted you so any custom program your own program you wanted to write your program always should start with z or y so these two are left for the users for writing their their program so z uh, pcs underscore demo one so i'm just writing my first program this is the name of the program is this program already existed it is saying we did not find any matches of course because i am doing this program for the first time right so i am giving here zero zero uh, for every one of you i will give you some two digit number code key so if uh, if somebody is having the number one you have to put zero one others zero two zero three, something like that so my programs i'm always ending up with a zero zero as a code so that i can easily identify your programs also if you don't like that's okay so this is my first program then what will i do i will go for create some title i can provide my first demo program your wish this is created by your user id on which date on which time the program created because this is a business software thing any program anybody any time who opened when it is opened who modified the code at what line the program is modified everything will get tracked inside the system because that is important security so anyone who is opening any code any changes if he is doing everything will get registered in the system in the logs and all are audited so you can type some title here there is one type i will give you the notes also for this things too notes in the steps so step by step to processor is there but today i'm just taking my time only for the introduction part tomorrow onwards there's no, no much more uh, explanations like this we will directly get into the action so we can create various types of programs but mostly we, we will select as we wanted to execute that we will select it is like executable program so provide some title choose the type of the program as executable program other types of programs also you will understand very soon executable program other details not compulsory not mandatory just simply say save when it is save it is asking for some package name i will tell you what is called a package where to create the package once the package is uh, explained and created then you can use uh, until then you have to say local object right now you don't know what is package and how to create once if you come to know you can use that for now click on local object so this is my about editor very nice editor coming up with some kind of row numbers also here i can write maintain some general notes commented lines here i can write some code what code anything you write it will scold me i will check for the errors is there any errors i can check if i check that obviously it is saying uh, all these are uh, useless code no syntax errors found in the report because i did not write anything your program always start with this keyword report and whatever the name you given get pcs underscore demo one that name also will comes here and every statement should end with the dot decimal in c language it is a semicolon right so here every statement should end with the decimal here i can write some statement depends on languages if it is a c language Uh, still i remembered we use print up statement if you wanted to display some output if it is java language i think java dot out some out uh, stream video use not writing that code in the recent times 
In above, if you wanted to show any output, we, we use the keyword called right. See, all the keywords will automatically convert into blue color, right? So what I wanted to display, I wanted to display a message, welcome to SAP. So whichever message you wanted to display, you should put it in the single quotes, mandatory. And finally, at the end, one decimal symbol. For example, I removed the decimal. After that program, you click on save button. Save button you can see at the bottom right. And before this program run, first you should check, is there any errors? If you click on check button, it is saying one error. The last statement is not complete, period missing, of course. Here this statement does not end with the decimal. I put it, again you click on save, and once again go here, check for the errors. Yes, there are no errors found. So I program, whether it is one line or thousand lines, concept remains the same. My program looks perfectly fine. Now I am ready to execute this program run this program. But if you observe here, right now the program is in the inactive mode. The program is in inactive mode. We need to activate this code. Once it is activated, activation means like generating the exe file, it is ready for execution. So this is the button you can use. Click activate. Then the program is activated. If there are any errors, then that activation will not work out. First, uh, you have to clear all the errors. Once if there are no errors, then only it will go for the activation. Program with errors will not let you to activate it. Once you find it is in active mode, it is ready to run. So this is the button you can press. Shortcut is F8. You can click on that and your program will run and output your finding here. So the program title you given that comes there, my demo program, my first demo program. If you leave that, this is your output. Welcome to SAP. Again, you want to come back to the editor, click on the back button, come back to the editor. Now I wanted to write another statement. This time I'm using this tilde operator. So this is new as syntax. This is new as a syntax. We can write write statement like this also. Instead of single quotes, we can put the message in this pipe symbols as well. Team. Check for this. I will tell you all the new operators separately. For now, initially, you follow only one pattern, but all these new operators at the end, I will tell. So you will get confused with uh, multiple things at once. Activate it, execute it. Why both of the lines displayed on the same line? I written the program here in two lines, but the output comes only in one line because your source, your source code line and output not relevant. Though it is two lines, system will understand after displaying this message, it should display this message. So when I run, after it displays the first message, there is huge amount of space. This entire line is there. Even if I print anything, it will start from here. It will go on like this. Uh, once if this complete line is completed, then output will come to the second line. Because it has more, more of the space, why should it go and print the new line? So no matter what, here if you put this much of lines also per system, that this is one statement, this is next statement. Still, output remains the same. So how you were uh, code here uh, appearing, don't expect the output also to be the same way, right? Even code I can write like this also. This is also correct. Because after decimal, system will understand that sentence is over, that statement is over. This is again another statement. Like newspaper story, you can write your above code continuously like this. That is also fine. So this is also correct statement only. After the first write statement, decimal is there. Next line started, still it will understand and output also comes the same way. Even if the indent is like this, still also there is no problem. So multiple lines, multiple gaps, that does not affect your output statement. 
as long as the syntax is correct, program get activated, your output will come like this. Because when there is more space here to display, the next outputs also will come like this. But I don't want. I wanted my welcome to ABAP line forcefully to go to next line. So here, there is one slash operator you can use. So which is indicating to the system, after welcome to SAP, just a cursor will wait here on the output screen. But this is slash will indicate to the system, forcefully go to new line. Then cursor will come to the next line. Once the cursor come to the next line, welcome tab up will be printed on the new line. So because of that, I got the output here like this because my coding, my write statement made my slash because of the slash that informed that you please go to next line and my output comes there. So here, if I write another message, thank you. Now you tell me those who not about experiential about them, those who are learning about for the first time. Now, if I display the output, how the output will come to where the thank you message will come? It will come along with welcome to ABAP. Yeah, after welcome to ABAP, the very next to thank you will come because for thank you message, I'm not saying that you should also go to new line. I'm not informing as such so that after welcome to ABAP, thank you is displayed on the same line. But I wanted a break here and thank you also to bring to the new line. Then in this right statement, I can inform that here to please go down. That's forward slash will take it to the new line. So uh, every time we have to give space, you know, where uh, write, write space. Yeah, so space. Should... Yeah, yeah. This space is required okay. between the keyword and the operands. Always one space is required. Uh, ABAP is very particular about spaces. So or the practice, you'll understand. But after welcome to ABAP, okay. See so here between these two statements, if you give five lines break also. That is not important for the system. This break will not come on your output. I hope you are getting this. This space, these lines, if, if I write like this, that does not mean that my thank you will go and display on that next line, nothing as such. Still the output remains the same. Clear? Code is your wish. You can write however you want. But after welcome to above, I wanted to get some break of three lines. I can write skip three. This is a valid keyword. It will create three blank lines. After three blank lines, it will go to next line and thank you will come. So on the fourth line, thank you will come. So after welcome to above, I have intentionally made three lines blank space. After three lines, it will go to the next line. And thank you, Mrs. came over there. Now, this space is generated because of this skip keyword. This thank you message is displayed, but this thank you message, I wanted to show it in some color. There are some color codes I can mention. I said color three. These two messages, I don't bother, but show me the thank you message in the color code three value. I can activate that one to seven color code numbers you can use. Now here, it is highlighted with some kind of a background color. It is background color, not the font color. Font color also we can change to. Anyhow, in the reports time, I will tell you that just to introduce about programming and seeing these points. Right now, we don't look at this fancy stuff. Programming, flow, activation, execution, those are the important things. <clears throat> So this is how your ABAP program looks like this. Then after that, we will start with variable declarations and uh, we will learn about performing operations like addition, subtractions, divisions, multiplications. And also we will learn about SQL statements to get the data from tables, process the data, 
suppose last to one month sales orders i wanted to get and i wanted to bifurcate last one month sales orders by each city and i wanted to get the total sum of the sales orders by each city wise that kind of report i should develop so first you should get the data from the tables then you should do that calculations right so for that you will learn about sql statements also in abap calculations operations how to do you will learn sql statements you will learn to process the data and uh, logical expressions sometimes if value is above 5000 i should do this if value is less than 5000 right if the amount is greater than 50000 i should do one way if it is less than 50000 i should do in a different way i should apply 10% here i should apply 20% discount all these logical operations boolean operations everything also you will learn in uh, above coding and the looping statements certain statements if you wanted to process repeatedly multiple times you will understand the looping statements once if the program is completely written still somewhere that program is not correctly working not uh, effectively working there is something wrong happening program is correct output is coming but it is giving me the wrong result that means somewhere in the middle of the program that calculation is not happening correctly where it is missing out why the problem is coming so those are called debugging you should be able to you know debug your code error analysis and normally when we are writing business applications we will not write programs continuously like a story it is very difficult for others to read the code to understand the code we need to make the program get divided into some modular units that is called modularization like dividing the program into small small bits and pieces it is easiest way to organize your development so all these techniques will comes under abap team in your abap programming language so these are all basics only once if you know all these basics then you will learn about developing some real report applications real report programs for your managers month and sales summary month and invoice summary kind of beautiful report programs you can able to develop once if you know all these programming techniques not only just about the right statements but variables operations sql statements logical expressions looping statements debugging skills modularization if you know all these things you will be absolutely good enough to develop some real report programs after that you will go to data dictionary to learn about tables and table maintenance and along with that we will learn about forms and enhanced pull structure so that is the course order team we will go with uh, one after one so for now this is the way you can able to develop one report program and in my program any time so suddenly i don't want this message welcome to app to be printed first just for some time i don't want to remove this line but i wanted to make this silent you can say comment it to select the line anywhere be be there anywhere on the line you press control comma hold the control key and press the comma key that statement will become to commented line the program is there but it it will not run you can still see it is grayed out you can use the shortcut or else in the beginning of the line if you press a star then also that line will goes to commented line if you wanted to remove that you remove the asterisk it will become valid state shortcut sir control comma and control dot if you press control dot that comment will get removed control comma it will be commented it will be deleted i wanted to make all these three lines get commented select all the three lines press control comma so all are commented again you want to remove the comment you select all the lines control dot 
it will remove the comments. So like that only, I made all these lines commented because if these are not commented, I will get some errors. So now if I check for the errors also, still that is fine, no errors. Because these are all commented lines, so system will not consider them for the check. It will not consider them either for check nor for the execution. All right, let's test your knowledge. Here's a question for you. What is the purpose of the AMDP analytic and modeling processes in SAP HANA? Option A, to handle complex data modeling and analysis. Option B, to manage user authentication. Option C, to optimize disk storage. Option D, to handle client server communication. Take a moment to think and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. Hey there, want to become a wizard managing supplies? Our SAP ABAP on HANA course is just what you need. You can take it at your speed on our site. In this course, you'll learn all about SAP ABAP on HANA. It's like a toolkit for planning things, from ensuring we have enough products to getting them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need, from the basics to advanced tips. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are pros who've been at this for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students love the course too. Folks just like you have found our course super useful. Best part? It's budget friendly. This amazing chance to learn won't cost you much. Ready to become a SAP ABAP on HANA Pro? Sign up on our page now. For more details, head to Zarentech's website. We have set the expectations about uh, this course and what is the outcome of this course. And also we have discussed about various terminology uh, as most of you are from SAP but still there are a couple of people who are from non-SAP uh, who never seen SAP before right so even for them to get aware of things so certain basic terminology also we have covered about and uh, if we if we quickly summarize what we discussed so we understood that SAP as one of the independent one of the largest independent software companies in the world I think it's about the uh, fifth largest uh, uh, software company in the world in terms of revenues. And, uh, <clears throat> but world's number one company, world's number one company in terms of uh, offering business solutions and business products. So company established in 1970s and it is, their journey was so vast about more than 50 years old company. And from the beginning, the company's motto was only to, you know, develop some kind of top and uh, top notch business product, business applications, business softwares. I mean, the softwares which are required, the products which are required for helping the organizations to run their business transactions. So on that journey, they came up with a number of products. Today, we have a lot of uh, products in the market from SAP. And one of the top-notch products, as, I already, as we already discussed, like I just said, around 70% of the global companies are using SAP products for their business. All the top major, uh, you know, enterprises, if you consider about, for example, in India, if I ask you to list out some top 10 companies in terms of volume, top 10 enterprises, what would you say? You'll say about Reliance and then Tata, uh, and then, in automobile companies about Honda, or Marty, and Mahindra, MG, and uh, when it comes to banking sectors, SBI, ICICI, and when it comes to service organizations like Indian Railways, uh, BSNL, right? What not in every of the in about uh, when it comes to you know pharma industries, you take the top-notch uh, organizations in India. Uh, today, if you look at their uh, so what is the ERP they are using for their today's operations? Obviously, you will, you will go and see, you will find only about SAP. SAP is playing the significant role in their business transactions. Definitely, every company will use SAP products along with other products also. But SAP 
ERQ products definitely would be the would be playing the key role in their day-to-day uh, -day business transactions. For example, Indian Railways. So just imagine how much uh, uh, business will happen in Indian Indian Railways. Every one minute uh, across India, how much of how many tickets they are selling and how much of revenue they are getting and how much of manufacturing is happening, how many employees are working in Indian Railways. Where end of the month, every single transaction, every single penny will be on record. So definitely it's not that easy to develop some software product to operate at this size, at this scaling, right? So very high level coding, high level applications, high level architecture, and the capabilities are required. So that's again not easy for other companies also to develop. That's the reasons SAP still remains as the number one ERP uh, market holder, still even as on today. All right, so that we discussed. And then, so what kind of uh, products are available in the market from SAP? If I ask that, right? So, what are the uh, what are the products available from Honda in India in, in India market? You can say that uh, I10 is there, I20 is there, Verna is there, Creta is there, right? You will say about uh, what are all the different uh, products available in the market. Similarly, what are the various SAP also selling various products, various software products? So, what are the what are the software products? Earlier it was ECC. Now they have developed a complete uh, uh, innovative a completely redesigned remodeled erp software that we discussed as for hana right as for hana is released in a year 2015 so before that it was ecc so when it is launched in year 2015 uh, november month uh, they named that as for hana version as as for hana 1511 if we look at their history so as for hana first version it is launched in year 2015 november month so they named it as as for hana 1511 Next year, they have released the next version, okay? And uh, next year means so year 2016. In October month, they released So that's why they named it October month 10, as for Hana 1610. And again, that upcoming year, as for Hana in 2017, that is 17. And again, that was also released in October month, 1710, 1709. And again, next version of as for Hana, Obviously, every year, every company will release their uh, new versions, right? 18 uh, But uh, starting from year 2000, 1909 is also there, and uh, they stopped calling that, and they started calling uh, as far as 2020, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. It is there as, as such. So definitely, some of you might have worked ago, long ago, you might have worked on any of these versions. In every version, they are coming up with uh, some more advanced features, advanced applications. So, so today, if you go and opt for the license of S4 HANA, you will be buying the license for 2022 or 2023, something like that. So this is one flavor on the one side it is. On the other side, what happened? This S4 HANA is being offered right now over the cloud. So in this case, what will happen? So what is the difference between this S4 HANA and that S4 HANA is just to, to introduce you the terminology. So this is called S4 HANA on-prem. So on-premise in the sense you are buying that uh, license first, you will buy the software and then you will buy one server, you will install it, you will maintain it completely within your uh, landscape, within your setup. So that one we call it as S4 HANA on-premise. But same S4 HANA, I mean with a, a different version of S4 HANA, it is available over the cloud also so that you don't require to invest your money in buying again hardware servers installations and then that server maintenance and uh, up upgrading the software always with latest patches so all these activities will be taken care by sap directly so they have they are just selling it is selling it to you uh, you have to subscribe how many users your company is your, your company wanted to use so here from your browser So by from your browser, just you can connect it to that server and then you can start access things. So your company is not investing any money in setting up a server, then install the software installation, software administrations and everything, which is all taken care by SAP directly on their servers. They, they will install it 
and they are offering it to you just you can go and you can use that we can access the applications we can access the programs and then we can able to do work on that but certainly there are certain uh, limitations restrictions in this s4 hana that is nothing but s4 hana on premise if any customer bought the license of the licensing costing and everything is also different uh, whereas if any customer bought sap s4 hana on premise licensing it is completely their own version right their own thing their own server so any modifications easily they can able to do any customizations any extensions they can able to easily perform it because it is fully owned to them it is fully fully given to them but when it comes to s4 hana as it is in cloud it is not possible actually for you to do whatever changes that you require for your company uh, there are certain possibilities we can do some uh, extensions to that but limitedly only because that same s4 hana might be used by other customers also at the same time but of course don't worry your your business data is always secured your business data will be always reside only in in a separate database for you so it it is not mean that your data will be accessible by others something no it is not like that your locker key will be with you only it is something like a locker key so your lockers so when you go to some kind of you know temples or any big stores there there you will see very huge big right almara cases but multiple lockers will be there so every locker will be having the or that alarm set up almara that everybody is using all are using the same thing but everyone is having their own uh, individual uh, locker where their items can be kept very safely similarly but it is not something like i wanted to move this one from here to there that no it's not possible it will be there just you have to use what is given to you here and there small modifications you can able to do that so that is also there and that is called s4 hana cloud again in this s4 hana cloud there are two flavors available thing so there are two flavors again available here one is called s4 hana public cloud and the second one is s4 hana private cloud again as the name indicating public cloud and private cloud certainly the licensing cost also will be uh, little uh, different there so private cloud basically you will be having a dedicated uh, resource dedicated tenant given to you uh, and also you will you are allowed basically to do the changes comfortably whatever you required for your business so that is possible with private cloud whereas in public cloud uh, very very limited changes only we can able to do that depend on your requirement your need companies will go for these three types of licenses either they will buy s4 on a on premise license or they will buy s4 on a public cloud license or they will buy s4 on a private cloud license okay and what are the limitations restrictions eventually you will understand uh, not all at once but try to no the terminology so has any one of you in this group worked on any s4 on a cloud project team before i think no yesterday as per my understanding one or two people worked on s4 on a but i think even that was also like uh, trupti trupti you worked on s4 on a right so here this one all these on premise servers we will connect with the sap gui from sap gui we will connect here to any one of these servers and you will work on that you will do the changes but as far on a public or uh, public cloud or private cloud environments we do access from browser and then we will work on that but definitely cloud environments are having little more restrictions basically uh, whereas when it comes to the private cloud uh, certainly private cloud almost gives the complete flexibility as like your on premise but instead of having the server in your own uh, uh, physical location you are deploying that server somewhere in the uh, in some data centers in some of the um, so it is available in the cloud you are using that but still it is your completely private it is completely your own version your own instance so even private cloud system is also is as much as equal to your on premise environment 
you will be allowed to make any changes whichever you required for your business in the private cloud setup but that's not possible with the public cloud setup but very cheap for example i started a company my company is very small currently in my company only 10 employees are working but still i wanted to buy sap s4 on a license so that server itself will cost about 3 to 5 crores i should invest uh, that much of money right now on the server on buying servers and then buying licenses installations uh, and all that headache i cannot bear so i just wanted sap s4 hana no matter where it is available right i wanted to use sap s4 hana for my business but whereas my business uh, size currently is very small so i will uh, opt for sap s4 hana public cloud uh, licensing uh, only for 10 users so eventually if my business is growing i will get more licenses for more number of users but i am paying only for the 10 subscriptions but still i can use sap software sap product for my business transactions and business operations so that's the beauty it is bringing in the cloud environment any questions here team anyone who wanted to know anything or any more uh, clarifications on any one of these terms here as for an on premise as for an public cloud and private cloud if you heard about anything anywhere even before also you cross question that you cross challenge that point here we will elaborate that and definitely you will come to know you will come to find the actual facts anyone had any questions to me here on this all right let's move on so in any of these environments to either on the left hand side environment or on the right hand side environment anything here if you see these are all based on above only so any modifications any new program developments any new style of developments you need to develop you should learn above and above is again further enhanced if you wanted to make some programs to get stored and to get executed in the cloud not in your local servers but some above programs you wanted to develop which can which will be stored in the cloud which will be executed in the cloud then uh, a kind of uh, different ABAP language more advanced uh, uh, features of ABAP we should learn and accordingly we should code that accordingly we should program that then that programs will absolutely work on top of cloud as well that kind of ABAP only today everyone is learning so it is not like, not like about the old days uh, ABAP language so the ABAP language what you are learning and what you are uh, you know picking up exploring should be like a language is it we we are using for the developments of uh, on premise environment and also for the developments in the cloud but that cloud aspects we are not covering in this course as on that enough time not given to us in this 8 hours uh, duration term we are focusing on the core ABAP skills especially the programming skills required to work on your on premise environments but eventually you can learn the additional things in abap and you will get ready you will become uh, you know competent even to work for cloud environments as well so that kind of abap you are learning so as i said yesterday learning of abap is nothing but learning of tools there are so many tools are there multiple tools are there you should come to know you should come to operate uh, how to operate that uh, tool right how to operate that tool first where should you switch after that where should you press and after that where should you close all these operational techniques should be known then you can able to operate that tool once if you are able to operate that tool then you can apply that in your job in your skills so that above set of tools also i have discussed it yesterday some of the tools and all these tools so we are not using any sap standard programs we are not learning how the programs are working but we are learning the tools in in case if there is a change required to be done in the existing programs how to do that that skill we are learning so we are becoming the technical people sap we are learning but again in sap we are not learning how to create a sales order because that is not your job and you are not learning uh, how to configure new material master new pricing master because that's not your job right now you are the team trying to become like a technical people so that the technology areas you are learning within sap again 
uh, usually uh, people in SAP will be classified into uh, these categories, as you know, technical consultants, functional consultants, and basis consultants, right? So just in a shortcut, so functional consultants means those basically who will learn about any one of these modules, sales module, material management, procurement, production planning, so finance. So they will learn, they will focus on how that SAP module is working. So tomorrow they will help to the companies on how to use that module, etc. So they are functional people. Basis consultants means how to install SAP software, how to create securities, how to provide authorizations, how do you how do they maintain users, their passwords, securities, data backups, data logs, all these things, administrative activities and uh, software upgrades. That is the team called the basis team. And another category, technical consultants, nothing but you are the people. So technical consultants means people who are basically there to do the repairs, to develop something new, either to modify the existing uh, program, modify the existing table, modify the existing screen, modify the existing application, or develop a new table, a new screen, a new program, finally a new application. So you are the people and you are learning those tools, those areas, what is required to fulfill that area. That is about the development and maintenance. So you are the people going to do the developments and also do the required maintenance activities. I think that in case if there is any issue coming, something that program, that application, happily working from last six months, but suddenly from today morning onwards, it is not, it is stopped not working. It is stopped working. It's not working as expected. We know, no one knows what is the problem, but you are the people, you are the firefighters. You can step in there, you can see, why it is not working, where it is failing, at what step it is causing the problem, you can able to identify that. And not only identify, and you can able to fix that. And again, you can you can tell that you can tell them the reason. Hey, because of this, 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 this particular program is failing. Because somebody has done so and so changes in your system. Because of that, this program is failing. You can able to fix that. You can able to identify and also fix that. And again, you will make the program run as smooth as it is before. That is your job. Either developing new applications or modifying the existing applications. And also in case of any issues, in case of any problems are raising in the software, in the products, identifying the reasons, identifying the issues also will be your job being the technical consultants. For that, you are learning ABAP. For that, you are learning these tools. Among that, first we will talk about ABAP editor. So the T code for that is SC38. So this one also we discussed yesterday. <clears throat> An editor where we do write coding. An editor where we can open the source code of any existed programs or new programs also we can create there in editor. So you can open an editor. In an editor, you will create a program. Always that program should get created with Z, right? And then any name you can provide to the program. It should start with Z or Y. Usually we start with the Z, custom programs. Well, custom programs means the programs which users are creating on their own must to start with Z or Y. And the description, different types of programs are there, include programs, executable programs. Let us initially you first create to create executable programs. Other types of other types of programs also will come to you slowly. And certain guidelines we are learning, like every statement should end with the dot and comments can be uh, put in by putting the asterisk symbol at the beginning of the line. And once the program is written, we have to check for the errors. And after that, we can, first we have to save the program. After the saving, we have to check for the errors and then we have to activate the program. Once it is activated, then you can execute the program. Control S, Control F3, Control F2, Control F3, and F8. These are the shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts also you can use, or else you can click on the buttons also on the screen.
So if you try three attempts with wrong password, it will get locked in. Again, we need to unlock that. We need to reset the password. We need to uh, re-log in. So do remember your password. So error predictor, we do open from SE38. So yesterday we have already seen how to create one sample program. So today, the same program, uh, I'm not creating one more program, but the same program I wanted to open. You can type the program name as you will remember here. If you go for display button, it will open in the display mode. So this, this is display mode. So you cannot do any changes. So usually when you wanted to read the program, you should open in display mode only because by mistake, even if you type anything in the keyboard also, it will not disturb the program. But if you are, if you wanted to change the code, select the program and then go for change. It is no need of create because it is already created. It is an existing program, so you cannot create one more time. It will say this program already exists. So you have to give a new name if you want to create a new program. Let us go for change. So now it is in the change mode. So in the change mode, you can able to do the changes to the code, right? So yesterday we discussed about some write statement using which you can able to display some output on the screen. This is the editor. After you activate the program, you can test it and on the output you are getting the screen. So this is called output list. Every screen will have some name stream. This particular screen is called output list. So on the output list, you can see some messages. Here only going forward, we will display very huge amount of data, sales data, purchase data, transactions data. All of our report output also will come here. This is the output screen and this is the editor we have. And every statement should end with the dot. And write statement we do use and slash is to go to the new line and uh, skip statement uh, we can use if you wanted to skip some multiple lines. So three write statements, three outputs. But if you observe here, one thing is common. You see team, all these three lines are starting with the right same keyword. You see, right, right, right. So consecutively, same keyword is repeating. So in that case, you know, when the same keyword is repeating, we can use a shorthand operator. So here we can put some colon. So the colon is basically indicating this keyword is commonly used. This right keyword is common, common to be used for all the components which are separating by comma. So here I'm not putting decimal, I'm putting comma. So indicating that this statement is ended here, but again, the right is applicable to the next statement also. So the next statement, what is my next statement? I will take off this right. So I will put it here. So I should go to new line and in the new line, I should display welcome to above. That's it only, comma. That means if it is comma, again, this common part, before the colon, whatever the keyword is there, command is there, that is applicable here also. Again, I said, go to new line and say thank you. So instead of writing three lines, three times write, 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 here I wrote the write command only one time and I put the colon symbol here. So that colon is indicating that this left-hand side command is applicable to all the parts here separated by commas. And at the last, we should end the sentence with a decimal. So wherever comma is there, it will understand that it is ended here. Again, the same command will apply to the next part. Again, the same command will apply to this part also. So now, instead of this code, you can do this code as well. Whatever this code is supposed to do, this code also will do the same job. Just to minimize the number of lines, we can do write the output, same output we are getting as like before. Okay, so this is also one shortened operator we can use when you wanted to apply the same keyword for consecutive sentences. But after that, if there is any statement, and again, if you have to write again, you should use write. This write is already ended here. When there is a different keyword coming here, this will not go again down. Again, next time, if you wanted to use write, you should use write separately. One more time, you should use. So here, this journey is already ended here. And another keyword, another commands starting on the next line. And when you are writing like this, uh, do remember, team, this is only for your convenience. You don't think like uh, if I write three lines like this, system will take three, uh, 
more time to run three statements. If I do write like this, system will take less time because it is written only in one line. I think doing like that, it is only for your convenience and comfort. You are writing like this for the system. Both these two code lines are absolutely same. Whether you write it in three lines or whether you write it in one line, you are making the number of lines smaller because to reduce your reading effort or coding effort, whatever it is, to save some time. But when it comes to the execution, while executing the code, the above one is a three lines, the below one is also three lines. So technically for the system understanding, for the system execution, both are mean for the same. Especially in software programming, you, you never bother about the number of lines increasing. You try to make the program more clear, more effective, and more meaningful way, it will give the equal importance to both. However, this command, not only like this thing, if there are some unprecedented changes also come, system will not consider these spaces. It will ignore all these white spaces. Still, this is a valid code only. It will accept that. It will execute that. The output also will come like as usual before. Two times it is coming because here uh, I wrote uh, two times now. Or else let me put one, one break here. Skip two. So first output, second output, both outputs are coming in the same way, though you written like this, so or else you can put something like this. So make your program basically looks more readable to anybody. So even if you put some un, uh, unrequired, uh, okay, indents like this, but within the code, if you put the gaps, it will take time. You see here, if you put the some spaces within before, thank you, but those are coming under the within the single quotes, right? Then that means you're trying to print the spaces. That is different. I'm talking about the empty spaces on the editor, but not the spaces within the single quote. Within the single quote, why thank you message came forward here? Because here before that, you have displayed some spaces as well. Where here you see, you have put in that spaces within this single quote symbol. It will be like that. So usually people will write uh, program lines as like this, but suddenly here yeah, there is a button pretty printer. If you click on that, your entire code will automatically get aligned according to the system standards. But here these things. So you can use pretty printer just to be wanted to align the code, execute the output. Here there is no spaces before thank you, but before thank you here, there is some blank is coming. The reason is here you are trying to display some additional spaces. So with this, you understood how do we use write command and also how do we use this slash line and also the shortened operator. Shortened operator colon to reduce the number of times so the keyword uses. So the above three lines and below three lines are absolutely same. Instead of that, this the the command before the colon symbol is commonly applicable for all the statements separated by commas until it finds full stop but if you put the full stop here itself then it is wrong so system will understand that that sentence is ended there so for the remaining two sentences there is no command so it will show you the errors Because here comma is there, but here there is no command. Because of reason, here you put in the decimal. Just over the practice, you will become perfect with this on top of the user system, but you can go with that. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Anytime in the display, if you wanted to display one underline also, you can write the command called uline. So uline will display one underline on the screen see here this underline is coming i wanted one underline between all these statements yeah still you can put up you can for example here uh, after every line i wanted some underline here i wanted some underline here So that underlines are forming after every line, 
if you want by writing this command you will like okay let me save this for now from here we will go on to the next slide so did you understand this uh, command still are you clear about this side command everyone so right now you understood about three keywords already right keyword you understood skip keyword you understood uline keyword you understood what else are the other keywords hundreds of keywords will come like this the most and the most uh, and the best study material for you is you know you, you just place the cursor anywhere on any of the keyword for example right command is there how to use this right command you just place a, place the cursor just on the right command and press f1 it will open internal help documentation this is not something coming from browser internal help documentation you see now we are learning about the right command how do we use the right command what is the syntax so these are all different different syntaxes okay we can convert into upper cases lower cases a lot many things this is all the notes with some good number of examples you can copy this example from here you can paste it in your abap editor you can test that code and you will understand how this is functioning how this is working out how the calculations are happening lot of about handling strings so much of program so much of coding so much of sample examples you will find here this piece of code you can just copy you can select this you can copy this you can paste it in your abap editor and you can test there not only about the right statement about any statement you want to for example skip skip one we are using so if you wanted to know more details about skip command let's double click on skip so what it is doing skip will create a blank line if i say skip 3 it will create three blank lines there is another syntax also about to use a skip command you can go through this you can see this example you can copy this example simply put it in your program test that it will give the results observe so this is one of the best places to learn every command everything in uh, sap ab and not only that at the bottom also you will see one section here called abap examples you go there then hundreds of programs are here alphabetically it is given right uh, for example if you are trying to learn about extracting if you are trying to learn about field symbols if you are learning if you are uh, trying to learn about some internal table creations you can select that it will open one nice program for you this program code simply you can copy you can execute this output from here also you can test the program here you will see how the output is coming here yeah exactly like this so now i want the output in my project also simple this code piece you can copy from here you can paste it in your program you can use that or at least you will learn lot many things from this one so in this example here you can go to the at the bottom you can go and you can see other examples where will you see where will you see the examples more than this where else we will get the uh, help documentation or the sample programs more than this if you wanted to learn about uh, string functions this is but of course instantly you cannot understand all this coding uh, lines after you gain some uh, level of understanding on things you can go to that so how do we come to this one thing how to get to the self document you just place anywhere on any keyword you can place the cursor and you press f1 the standard above documentation will come just place the cursor there press f1 the help documentation will come to you from here you can uh, scroll you can go to any topics any sections within above complete information about cds views about data dictionary about reports everything you will get here so if you observe this diagram i have put in uh, different types of uh, baskets or bags whatever you call it so i am i am going to call all these things as containers agree will you agree 
are these all containers or not container means basically where you are uh, keeping something right you can store something you can keep up something and then you can carry that so that is called a container uh, no 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 need not be the containers which are going on the highways uh, carrying uh, milk milk container petrol containers cars cars and uh, bikes also will go on with big containers right anything which holds something and helping you to carry that uh, for one place to another which is called as a container in our programs also we will be having the need of having some containers those technically call it as data objects because program means what program means just not only always about to display some uh, uh, output on the screen program is always about handling some data so doing some calculations processes some data so user definitely will provide some input to. based on that input we will do process certain calculations and finally we will show the result for example user is entering two values 10 and 20 how we should find out the sum of both the values or the average of both the values that average calculation should be done inside the program finally the result should be shown on the output side but how program will handle that values whichever values user entered on the screen how your program will take them take into take into it then how your program will do that calculation finally how it will display that output that means throughout the program execution your program is responsible to carry some data some data given by user some data which it calculated and find and finally that out that data to be shown on the screen so program is always meant for process the data certain data will be given as an input and some process also to be taken up on that given inputs on that given data finally the resulted data has to be shown on the screen but how your program will handle that data where it will store that data how it will manage that data with the help of these containers those containers only we called as data objects we can call with any name variable structures lot of technical names slowly will come but ultimately what are all they they are all data objects data object means a container which is holding some data within it and helping the program to carry the data so from the beginning to the end it is helping you to carry that information suppose you went to a vegetable market you bought some vegetables so while going there you will take you will take some container the right hand side you look at this bag white color bag so it is helping because you cannot hold all the data in your hand so you are taking that container to the bag and then you are filling so initially at home it is an empty bag that means there is no data inside that there is no data inside that just an empty bag only you went to vegetable market you bought some vegetables you put that uh, content inside that means data is there inside and you carry from there to your home so that bag is helping you to carry some data from the shop to your home like that this containers also will help you to carry some data in your program we need to create this kind of containers again containers are of different type for example uh, i am going to market to, to buy about some uh, about some 5 liters of oil i am going to buy will i take this container uh, so you look at here look at this picture this color baskets uh, these are also containers shall i take these containers to buy some oil can i take these containers to buy some oil oh oil in R these right. containers that means that means every container cannot carry everything depends on the data you are trying to put in there you have to choose the correct container type should i use this container or the, even this container is very big there are no holes also still can i take this bag to buy oil no no again because oil liquid items still this bag cannot hold it is a container definitely there are no holes also still even this is not the appropriate container to carry my particular data in this example my data is that oil that oil cannot hold by this container then i wanted to definitely especially designed especially created container this one like this i will take it up so this is a container which i can use especially when i am handling especially when i have the requirement to handle liquids but again it uh, it is costly also just think like that again at the same time can i use the same container to buy uh, some flowers or vegetables something like that again no still it has its own set of purpose it is a container these are also containers these are also containers i will be using the right container according to the content according to the content i am trying to carry for example i am going to buy some x so definitely i can i can keep x in this basket also i can keep x in this basket also 
and somehow if there is a big hole i can keep x in this this basket also still even though it is possible to carry the x in this container but among these two containers among these two containers which one would you prefer when you go to market to buy the x still even is it is not something like not impossible it's not impossible to carry the x in this bag you can bring it up still even among these two which container would you prefer bottom one bottom one though still there is a possibility still even you are using you are choosing the appropriate one depend on the data you are storing similarly in your programs also in our abar program also we are going to handle different sets of data what is that called you know sometimes you are required to handle some values values are different 10 20 30 40 those are called values numerical values those numerical values should be carried in a separate type of container and uh, sometimes i will be using uh, some characters like your initial name your some symbols that is a different type of data and uh, sometimes i will be using some names your first name your company name i wanted to store that value in somewhere i have to choose the correct container in which i can able to store names if i try to store if i try to store my vegetables in this egg basket what will happen if i try to store my vegetables in this egg basket what will happen your egg basket definitely cannot can i put can i put my vegetables in this egg, egg basket or not what will happen to me if i put it all right let's test your knowledge here's a question for you which statement is true about the cds core data services in abap on hana option a used for defining and consuming abap dictionary objects option b a replacement for traditional database tables option c facilitates data modeling and access in a unified manner option d a tool for database administration take a moment to think and when you're ready choose the correct option remember each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer good luck type the correct answer in the comment section hey there want to become a wizard managing supplies our sap abap on hana course is just what you need you can take it at your speed on our site in this course you'll learn all about sap abap on hana It's like a toolkit for planning things from ensuring we have enough products to getting them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need from the basics to advanced tips. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are pros who've been at this for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students love the course too. Folks just like you have found our course super useful. best part it's budget friendly this amazing chance to learn won't cost you much ready to become a sap abap on hana pro sign up on our page now for more details head to zarantex website so sir, all, all, all the content cannot be fit in that container some pieces of all the mirchi and all onions whatever i put in some content definitely there is a space to go and keep there and rest of the content will come out because there is not ample space enough space to carry to keep my vegetables over there so we will be choosing the very wise decisions every time when we are handling this real time scenarios real usages why not the same logic we do apply in our coding also definitely it is required what type of data are you handling are you choosing the correct container for that are you choosing the right container for storing the right data within it if not certainly you will see that consequences if i put the oil in this one first 5 minutes it will stay there after that slowly it will get start leaking because it is your thing it is your wrong that you have chosen a wrong container for the data currently which you are processing it looks like so over the practice as we got the common sense similarly here also but common sense need to be applied different types of data will be stored in different containers so in our program we will be creating then the question will come how to create containers the containers we do create by using the keyword called data 
for every container there will be one name uh, when when we are going to market we will tell to mummy or our mummy will also tell hey you take the blue basket and go to market so that is the name given to that basket there are two baskets at your home yellow basket you are using for puja items and blue basket you are using for vegetables okay so the, the she will say take that toilet basket and go to market so every basket has to be identified by a name you take that jolly bag and then go you take that blue color tin and then go similarly in your programs also as we are going to handle and work with multiple containers every container we will give some name so how to create a container first the keyword we use for creating the container is the keyword called data and then the name of the container because multiple containers will be there in your program so for every container you should give some name and what is the type of the container we have to specify some type name here that means is that container should made up with cloth is that container should made up with the plastic is that container should made up with uh, metal or wood and so what what kind of container it is what is the quality of the container and how big it is how small it is that is deciding by the that type name for example this is the way first we do create a container so once a container is created container created means what one empty bag is there there is no content inside that container is there there is no content empty bag is there after that you will fill the data within that so that kind of container we do create data container name of type that type name this type name will tell what type of container it is so data v1 of type there is one type name standard type name that is called i i will tell what is that now you compare these two statements team so here what is this v1 is talking about Name compare data. these two state name of the container and the type as as it is it is there so data so let me put in a, a different colors for you it is easy for you to understand so these things will not change team whatever i put in red color will not change these names your choice you will be you will be putting that too, but this type name is also standard one no? so some standard types are there that you will put in up so this name of the container is up to your choice you are putting it so data v1 is the name of the container type i have written as it is the type type name i and then here i said data v2 of type c you know both looks pretty much same two statements that means two bags here two bags are made here this is bag 1 this is bag 2 how much difference is there between these two bags here i can carry about 10 kilos of vegetables directly i can bring to home with this bag but in this bag hardly it is difficult for me to carry more than 2 to 3 kilos of items so much of difference is there i should use this one to carry only certain types of items and i should use this one to carry something else similarly here v1 and v2 are two of your bags two of your bags v1 is a bag but in v1 what can you store in v1 what can you store can you store oil or can you store only not liquid items but only the solid items what can you store here can you store liquid items or solid items or what else or gas items simply this is deciding that this i is indicating that uh, this is a integer container so you can store any time integers only integers means 10 20 30 40 minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 all integers you can store in v1 in this container any time you can store some integer value how do i store that like this v1 equal to 100 so in that container now i have stored a value called 100 similar at the same time v1 equal to ravi can i store a name like this no definitely not possible why because v1 is a container i told you why means there is a reason in this container in this container can i keep my oil you said very clearly no because this container is not made for that 
this container is not meant for carrying the liquid items period that material that size that quantity whatever it is this container is not made for carrying vegetables it is specially designed for a separate thing similarly v1 is a container which is very clearly said it is decided it is dedicated for storing only integers i can store only integers but i cannot store the names v1 cannot hold v1 cannot accept v1 cannot take any time i can store v1 equal to 10000 i can store it is happy but still v1 equal to one small symbol no it cannot store whether it is small or big not matter it can store one lakh value v1 is ready to store one lakh but v1 is not ready to store one single character because it is a different container it is made it is created with a different material with a different purpose for the purpose of storing only integer values like that this is also made for storing any character symbol that means v2 equal to character symbols we will put in single quotes we have to store while giving it in single quotes i can put star i can put my initial i can put any other symbol but i can store again only one character if i try to store ravi within that still will it accept no because v2 is a character variable it can take characters but still it is saying uh, i can store only one character sorry don't give me lengthy values even if you give lengthy value still v2 can store only r because there is not enough space it is saying that i can hold only one character we cannot store multiple characters then you will ask the question if i wanted to store ravi name then what then you find out the other data type find out the other alternatives like that your requirement will make you search for more and more advanced things data v3 another container thing so v1 v2 v3 i'm just giving some name don't look at that v1 abc1 abc2 abc3 whatever it is these are my container names c1 c2 c3 container 1 container 2 name can be anything what does it matter type d so in c3 is a container c3 is a container i can store dates in shortcut we also call them as variables because of the programming terminology that's the reason i'm giving the name as v these are all v1 v2 v3 these containers we, we have technically all our containers team all our containers but technically we will be giving different names to them so this type of containers are called variables different types of containers also will come so v3 is another variable in v3 what i can store i can store some date oh this is for storing the date values any date value for example what is today date uh, 23rd january right so while storing the date you should store like this first year next month next to date while storing you should store like that but while printing it will come normally only date month year but when you are storing the value you should store like that 2024 01 today date is 23 you can store like that what else are the other types data v4 of type t you can store the time hours minutes seconds what is the current time that you can store how do we store v4 equal to so right now it is 330 so 03 30 00 hours minutes seconds this is the format hours minutes seconds and here this is the format years month date while storing what else are the other types data v5 of type i can use packet decimal if i wanted to store some decimal values like 3.5 4.5 v1 is a variable i mean v1 is a container it can store one lakh -like value but still it cannot store 1.5 which is bigger 1.5 is bigger or 1 lakh is bigger 1 lakh is much much bigger still v1 saying i'm sorry i cannot hold decimal values i am only intended for storing integer values if you give me 1 lakh i will take if you give me 1.5 i cannot take it it cannot hold 1.5 but still it can hold 10000 or 1 lakh also if you wanted to store the decimal values 
you have to create that variable of type p so these are all some standard data types we have to some of the standard data types lot many other types also there like for even bigger values we have the float type numeric character type n is there slowly and depend on the need we will go for that so like that first you have to create how many data containers you need for your program now in my program next we are going to create a program in which user will enter two values and now i have to find out their sum and out that output i should display so for that program to handle how many containers do i need how many containers do i need to handle that program definitely for taking the user input i need two containers and to find their sum i need another container so totally three containers i should create so once if i have three containers in that program definitely i can play with that and i can make my job get done throughout your abap so many things are coming up for creating various types of containers you will be creating a even very big big containers also team it will come so these containers i have explained very normally but look at this picture this is one container but what is the difference here if you observe this is looks like only one bag only but within this bag itself i have multiple pockets again i can keep up all the items separately any item individually i can just all the lemons are kept here and then all onions are kept here just i can put in my i can put my hand inside and then i can pick up the data i no need to search for everything it is one container but internally having multiple you know shelves within it multiple blocks multiple uh, place holders to segregate the items separately individually so this is also again a container depend on the purpose we are going to create this type of containers also but any container you do create by using this same statement data is a keyword the name of your container that is the name of your container name of type it is also one keyword you have to provide the type name this type name itself everything team this type name itself is telling is deciding what type of container it is what can you store within it what you cannot store how much big it is how much how small it is how big it is what is possible what is not possible in that container that is deciding by the corresponding type which you are using while creating that container is it clear see right now we have multiple uh, types within it so for now minus 235000 to plus 235000 value you can store and again within that there are uh, integer 2 integer 4 types also there earlier uh, we can store between minus 235000 to plus 235000 but now we can uh, use within integers also again another uh, types are given up to minus 8 lakhs to plus 8 lakhs you can store a language to language it will store here also we have that one short integer long integer mid integer depend on the purpose for example you are writing a program about some student marks and student uh, total so average kind of thing obviously any student marks will not cross it is always below 100 only even if there are six or six subjects to 10 subjects their total marks also will not cross more than 1000 well while play while writing a program to play values within uh, 10000 to 10000 10000 10, values definitely you don't require such a big container it is something like uh, you are going to market uh, you are you are just you are going to market uh, to buy a lemon but you are carrying this bag you are going to market to buy just one single lemon but you are trying to you are you are carrying this bag it will not uh, required uh, any simple pocket container also even you can take up there similarly uh, these types will decide in integer also if you are playing with uh, very smaller values let us take only the short integer here also we have different types of uh, data types to reduce unnecessary to avoid unnecessary uses of space uh in the tables definitely not only values uh, you will be storing some images also you will be storing some photos also lot of content you are storing for that we have uh, various types of data types when we are creating the dictionary tables i will introduce even some more advanced data types also there okay okay thank you yeah just this is only the data types 
for uh, writing the program the very fundamental basic data types which we are using for creating various types of containers eventually multiple data types with the multiple uh, capabilities will come up because these are all there for developing business applications so certainly what is needed for business those are all already available in our we can rely on it then if i wanted to store some name right there are two options data v7 now you see uh, when i when i use type c i said you can store only one character but you cannot store one complete name but if i wanted to store the complete name here type c type c only we do use but we do write here length 20 so this is one addition like that slowly one after one will come so by my, it is also character type but here explicitly i mentioned length 20 that means we yeah that means so in that one i can able to store one complete name also because up to 20 characters i can store in this v7 because this is a character type but sometimes i don't know even i store uh, uh, 10 character or 20 character even sometimes it will be more than this we have another data type called a string i can use that then it is up to your choice so vit equal to there is no fixed limit of length that 20 characters or 30 characters you can store uh, lengthy names as well team i can store it in v8 because it has been created with the data type string so some of the data types i have introduced here slowly when we are moving into the uh, deep, deep deeper things other data types also will get loaded and we will play with that but these variables we should not declare with v1 v2 v3 v4 like this thing just for our understanding i said in the programs we will be giving some meaningful names because all of a sudden what is v6 what is v5 we cannot understand we have to give some meaningful name to that variable then accordingly we do code our program let us see how to declare the variables and how to store the values and how to display that values is it clear team about the introduction of data types first we have learned to, how to create the containers nothing but the data objects all data objects this is the only syntax thing simple to remember data your container name of type some data type name this data type name will decide what type of container it is so normally like our visible kind of our normal containers will not have anything within this but these containers by default will possess some values internally that is called a default value for example v1 is an integer container i have created it is an integer container integer variable so by default you did not store any value so by default internally it contains a value called zero so if you display the value of v1 you will see the output as zero but if you store some value now that zero will be overwritten by the value 100 because if you don't assign any value internally default it contains zero so the, the default values will be there for every of this data type stream so here default is default value zero and for characters the default value default value means the moment you create the container what is there inside once you assign the value that value will be there once you put something in the bag, that will be there. But before that, what is there in that bag? That is called. So for the character variables, the default is just one blank space. That means no value. For date variables, if you store any date, it will hold the date. If you not store any date, by default, it contains a value like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, that is yes. 0, 0, that is month. 0, 0, that is date. By default, value will be like this. So here also for time variables, default 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So date and type, we have to put it in single quotes. So this one also 0. Uh, floating will have some base value, not 0. I need to check that. Uh, let me recolor. Even characters, as you know, space only, empty space only. String also will have empty space only. You generate the requirement on your own and find out the way. Okay, team? So let us implement that uh, in our programs and then let us execute them. So I'm creating another program, demo2, using data objects. Save it as a local object. 
So team, in this code, let us see how to create one simple program about understanding the uses of data containers, how to create them, how to you store them, and then how to use them. So data value one of type i data value two of type i. You see. These two words are coming in here. Uh, keywords are coming in blue color, and both are both I have declared as integer variables. Now, if I show their values, if I display their values, when I am displaying, you should see these are the container names. Container names you should not put it in single quotes. If you put like this, that means you wanted to display the value as like value one. This message will be displayed as like your name. It is a name, name of the variable. Name of the variable, we don't put it in single quotes. Only fixed text message will put it in single quotes. So if you see the values, okay, guys, let us uh, continue. Okay, so we have seen their initial values are zero, zero. But I think it would be good, right? If I display some message also to them. So, right. Uh, value of first variable something like this as a message and here value of second variable so i suppose you to write uh, four right statements but four right statements we try to combine here in uh, two lines so activate it execute the output Value of first variable zero, value of second variable zero. Why this gap is coming? Because integer values will follow the right alignment. It comes like this. You'll understand that output management also slowly. Now I wanted to store some values. Let me let me put value one. Let me put value one equal to hundred, and value two. I mean that variable names I have taken as such team. If you if you take these names not like uh, uh, value one and value two, if you take their names as v one and v two, obviously you have to call them with the name of v one and v two only. So here you display the value of v one, you display the value of v two. Some meaningful names we will take. Usually in the projects we will be following some naming standards for the projects. I will tell you that naming standards uh, for everything what we are preparing, declaring certain uh, naming standards we should follow. For the variables, for the containers, for the constants, for the structures, for the tables, for the classes, for the objects, for everything, certain naming style we should follow. You, I, I will be sharing that uh, details as well. After that, you do create by following that standards. So, so V2 is equal to 200. Now I stored some values. V1 value 100, V2 value 200. Now let me uh, now once again let me display that values again. So let me put some two lines break and after that. So before, first I have declared here. Declaration is done, right? So here I will write some comment. Declare the variables, right? So variables are declared. And after that here, I'm trying to display their values. Display their initial values. What is their initially? And after that here we are assigning some values as then values to variables or your containers we did that and now here we are again displaying the values so like that when you are writing the code every time you are, you will be writing some comments also because tomorrow if somebody else look at your program what is happening what is declared why it is written like this by by reading this extra lines of you know comments uh, they can easily understand the entire program that skeleton very comfortably because you are the person today developing this project tomorrow somebody else will come so for them to understand what is our total logic they want they should be able to read your mind who prepared that program it will take for some time for them to go through all the lines of code and understand but certainly these comments will make the understanding of the code very easy for them so it is also a good idea uh, professional uh, way of writing programs by writing all the relevant comments at all the relevant sections. 
Anyhow, these comments will not increase your program size or program burden or program weight. If you write even 100 lines of comments also, still that's not any additional burden for the program because the, those are just only comments. So system will not consider them for the execution. Activate it. So when I run the program, fantastic. So initially their values are zero, but now their values are 100 and 200. We are getting that. Very good. Now let us do some calculation. I wanted to add these two values and I wanted to store in some third variable and I wanted to display that. So for that, what should I do? Here again, I have to take some third variable. Okay, earlier above is also used to be like this. In so many programming languages, all the declarations we will do in the beginning of the program. And after that only, we will continue the program. Even above also like that only. Above also, we have to declare all the variables in the beginning of the program. And after that, the remaining code has to run up to last few years. This was the scenario, but now, SAP made it very simple. Whenever you need, then and there you can declare that variables also. So free style of declaration made possible. Earlier it was not the case, okay? But now it is happening. Anyhow, still do follow that now. Sum equal to V1 plus V2. So here plus is an arithmetic operator. Like that we have so many arithmetic operators also team. What are the arithmetic operators we have? We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then uh, mod for uh, remainders, and then exponential is also there. Uh, what is that symbol? Or this? I will tell. Let us first work out on these operators and for assignment equal to as usual you know equal to okay but make a note of team always there must be one space between operand and operator always there must be one space between operand and operator so here if you see here v1 plus v2 so here plus is operator v1 and v2 are operands so there must be one space always between the operator and operand even sum equal to v1 so here also left hand side is sum right hand side is v1 in between operator is v1 operands are sum and v1 there must be one space between operator and operand now i have added both the values finally let us display the result sum equal to what is the name of the variable? The name of the container. Name of the variable or name of the container is some which I have displayed here. Activate it. Execute it. So sum equal to 300 coming. Fantastic. So first program in which you have declared the variables, stored the values, did the calculation, finally displayed the output as well. See, when you are looking at my screen, my explanation, it looks very easy. But when you start do writing on your on your own, fingers will not move on keyboard. How to do practice? By practice only, it will become uh, comfort. Without practice, while well, listen, entire thing you will be able to understand and follow. But again, the moment you come to do the coding, things will not work out. A lot of practice is required until you become very familiar about all these syntaxes. Sum equal to 300. Similarly, let us do the other calculations also. For a difference, I have taken diff of type i. So for multiplication, data, PRD, like for product. Okay, for division, div of type i. Or S for sum, D for difference, P for product. D for division, I have taken all are of type integers. Let us do that calculations also. Now this is not sum. This is S I have taken. Variable names are your choice team. There are some guidelines for variable names also. I will tell that. Similarly, let us find the difference equal to up to your choice. So V1 is bigger or V2 is bigger. You can do that. I said V2 minus V1 because V2 is a big value I have. Uh, or else v1 minus v2 if you do you will get the negative values minus value 
let's do minus value only what is wrong v1 minus v2 similarly product let's do the product v1 into v2 let's do the division v1 by v2 we can do that finally let us display all the results here sum equal to difference equal to product equal to division equal to so sum this is difference this is oh two variables with same names are here difference and uh, division okay division let me put dv variable name is dv product is equal to p division equal to dv variable names you will you will be taking very meaningful names team so let let me save it execute it yeah sum is 300 100 minus 200 if you do minus 100 if i do multiply both product is 2000 if you do the division division value is coming about 1 because it is uh, values are taken as such so let me take v1 equal to 10 v2 equal to 2 yeah 10 and 2 now sum equal to 12 difference is 10 minus 2 8 product 10 multiply 2 20 division 10 by 2 if you do 10 by 2 the division value you are getting 5 so like that the answers are coming why the alignment is coming like this why all the things all these things are not coming in an order line because on the left hand side even this text also is like that all these alignments uh, appearance colors outputs that will come first focus on the logic building only but if you give this program to any customer if that customer use this program forever in his life type in his lifetime every time this program is only adding and subtracting 10 and 2 only because in that program v1 value is 10 v2 value is 2 that's it so this program if you run for 100 times also 100 times also it is running only 10 plus 2 only if you want this program to happen if if you want this program to work with uh, any other two values so only thing is he has to open that code he has to change that values in the code because v1 v2 values we have directly taken inside the code if you want the program to run on a different values so He has to again go there and change the code. He has to give some new values, but he doesn't know, right? How to change that code, and why should we? No, instead of taking the values like this, I wanted to run the program. I wanted to develop the program in such a way that when I run the program, it should prompt me. It should ask me two values first. It should ask me two values. Whatever values I am giving to it, my program should work on those two values. Every time when I run the program. it should ask me hey please enter first value and second value so if i give 100 and 200 it should work if i give 1000 2000 it should take something like that i wanted the program to work right that is the purpose of the program the purpose of the program is not to add 10 plus 2 for lifetime the purpose of the program is to work on any two values like your calculator if you give any two values it will do the addition it will do the subtraction but how do we do that we will see that with an, another example but so everyone understood this program any questions here in this program please very good so note down this program name also and every one of you should able to do this code develop this code and uh, test this program once okay so this program i am keeping it as it is then let me create one more program but i will copy this program so here there is a button to copy so this entire program i can copy into another program but you don't do this copying things you try to write it from the beginning you see this code do write it what you will do what what people will do they will just select all this code control c they will copy that you will paste it in the code you will test the execute button result will come is that only for the result only if you want you can run my program also you don't need to copy that and paste it in your program directly you can run my program also 
but the objective is you to write the code you to write the code observe the problems errors and become familiar so you refer my programs but so i'm copying the entire code of demo to into demo 3 program yeah copy again click on local object it is copied now this program i'm making some modifications what is that modification i'm doing you know instead of taking v1 v2 like I always work with uh, 10 and 2 no i don't want to give 10 and 2 like that and in fact uh, i don't want uh, v1 v2 to be created like this i wanted to let the user provide some input one is for v1 and one is for v2 if that is your requirement don't create them like this there is same just another way you have to use a keyword called parameters so team tell me what is the change i made there for the above two lines and below two lines what did what did i change what is the change you noticed v1 v2 yeah. variables are same type i type i are same just to this keyword data i have changed it with the name called parameters now you see the magic what will happen let us activate this now when i run the program this time now it is asking two input fields one is for v1 one is for v2 this type of input fields will come automatically because of instead of taking it as a data because of taking it as a parameters it is another keyword it will allow the input allow the it will let the user to provide some input now here a value is 10 b value is 2 or v1 is 10 v2 is 2 execute i got the answers come back see when you come back you are not going to the code again you can test with uh, 20 20 execute 20 plus 20 40 20 minus 20 0 20 into 20 400 20 by 20 division is 1 let me try this value is 1000 this value is 20 execute it is 1000 this is 20 and nine, uh, minus subtraction 980 product is 20,000 division is 50. So your program is allowing the user to enter some inputs and the program is processing. The program is running on top of the values of V1 and V2. Suddenly I have not entered anything in V2. Only I given the V1 value 1000, but will you V2 value I did not give anything. If I run the program, what will happen to you? Guess what will happen? You should throw an error. No, it will not throw any error at this moment uh, because integer anyhow by default it contains the value zero, right? Zero. So it will under it will understand that uh, okay, you don't want to give any value. So still it I am okay. It will say okay, fine. You don't want to enter any value for V2. I am, I am fine. So V1 value is 1000. V2 value is zero. So 1000 plus zero, 1000. 1000 minus 0. 1000. 1000 multiplied by 0. What is the answer? 1000 multiplied by 0. 0. 0. And 1000 by 0. So that is the problem. If it is 1000 by 0, because divisor should not be 0, it will go to infinite values, right? Because we know that uh, uh, denominators never be 0. If you run the program, it will go to the short dump like this. Because it is trying to do 1000 by 0 which is completely uh, uh, not logical thing. It is an infinite value. So system is not able to calculate that value. So that is the reason it comes up to this error. This is actually called dump, short dump. So dump means some uncatchable error. Something happened which system could not able to handle it. So that is the error happened. What is the error happened? Why, that's, why this error happened? If you come down, you will see it will explain you also the reason. The problem is with the division operator. See, the current ABA program had to be terminated. The program got terminated because it found a statement that could not be executed. Achha. Because of what statement? The program terminated. You come down, scroll down. It will show the line. Because of what line? Your program actually not successfully executed. If you come down your source code, see, it is saying this symbol. Look at this symbol. It is indicating that there is something wrong happened here because v1 value 1000, 1000 division by zero. This is completely not 
logical thing. So the system could not able to handle it. It went wrong. So to avoid that, to avoid this kind of things, what should I make? I wanted to make user must enter some value in V2. I wanted to make sure user must enter some value in V2. Right now, this is 1000. Even if I don't enter anything in V2, still my program is running, but I don't want my program to run like that. I wanted to make this field mandatory. You will also write when you are submitting any college application form or, or any online form, some fields you will get with the, the red color asterisk mark. What is that indicating that is a mandatory? Compulsory, you must enter the value like that. If you wanted to do that behavior, yep, there is an option. For V2 especially, I wanted to. I said obligatory. So by making it as obligatory, let us see the difference now. Simple, for V1 I did not made, but for V2 I made it, it is obligatory. Execute this. Now you see here, V2 specially marked now. Did you see the symbol here, red color asterisk? Did yep. you notice that thing? Yep. So V1 value 500 I given, but value V2 value I did not give anything. Let me try to run. No, it is not taking me. See the see the bottom error message. Make an entry mandatory in field value V2. Compulsory. Whether you enter five or minus five, ten or minus ten, your cho your choice. But please provide a value. Until you provide this value, system will not let you run the program. After that, only output is coming. For example, I did not enter any value in V1. I have entered value only in V2. Will it take it now? Will the program now, if I click on execute? Yep. Yes, because I have not made V1 as mandatory. So whether you enter any value for V1 or not, system will not bother. System will bother whether you entered a value for V2 or not. If I run, it will take V1 value as zero, V2 value as 10, and on zero and 10, all the calculations can be done. Because denominator, numerator can be zero when divisions are happening. When you are doing the divisions, denominator only should not be zero as per arithmetic calculations. It is working fine. But still, if you want to make both of them as obligatory, you can do both also as obligatory. Now compulsory, if you enter the second value, But if you don't enter the first value, still it will not run. Compulsor are asking for V1 value also. Now it will run. Very good. But when I am running my program, if you observe, by default, these are obligatory, but there is no default value coming in. Because they have 0, 0. But uh, here, I just wanted to make sure that at least uh, some initial values like v1 value 100 uh, v2 value 10 i wanted to i wanted to give some default values for v1 as 100 v2 as 10 so when you program run directly it will come with 110 values by default you can change that if you want at least still you can run that program so that v1 will take 100 and v2 will take 10 so by default if you wanted to impose some values into the variables here there is an addition called Default. Hundred and twenty eleven. Activate it. Execute it. So both are mandatory. By default, they comes up with hundred and twenty. I can run the program. Output calculations will happen on hundred and twenty. Still, if I wanted to make changes, that I can change that values, and I can again I can run. So default, you can give some values to the variables by using the addition called default. For parameters, you should use default in, but uh, as like the first example, for the data variable, by default, it is zero. But if you wanted to give some default value, you have to use this addition called value. If you wanted to provide, if you don't provide that value, its default value is zero. But if you, if you want to provide any value, there you have to use the addition called value in case of when you are working with the data but if you are working with parameters 
you have to use the keyword default that is the difference between these two so data means these are also variables these are also variables but these are different variables it is taking input from you but these are all internally working not taking input from you so this is another program demo3 all are working fine okay team so now it's 420 let's take a small break so post the break i will introduce some more operators and some more calculations you see what is what we are trying to do eventually we are building the structure we are eventually strengthening one after one one after one first purpose why why are we doing that first one requirement we are generating we are understanding okay if this is the requirement what is the solution for that and again like that we will slowly increase the complexity we will we will try to create a problem a challenging situation for the challenging situation what is the way what is the answer abap is giving what is a, a way to address that requirement in case if that is a requirement comes to you from the client what is a solution from our end that we can do in our abap we have to build in that uh, successive manner actually that is very uh, good style rather just always limiting okay this is only taught this is only learned this is only practiced not like that a programmer's mindset always should be like you should be in the in the shoes of the client first you should generate the requirement on your own you should think about the problems from your end first tomorrow if this is the question comes from the client you first ask the question yourself then you will come to know. so if client is something asking a, a kind of question it is it should be something like you could not uh, ever imagine that before such kind of questions should come from, but for all the rest of the questions you should have the mind you should have the answers with you that should be the mindset for the programmer always here also definitely i'm going to teach you very few things only rest of the things come on you 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 ask yourself and you find the answer for that you find the solution for that it is all about requirement solution requirement solution you generate the requirement you find out the way for that and when it is a wrong keyword directly it is coming in red color right so that is your requirement right how system will so we one we took two values were entering which one you wanted to make it mandatory that is absolutely your need right yeah that is exactly our that is our personal need among these two variables you are handling with 10 variables among 10 which one you wanted to keep mandatory which one is not mandatory that is absolutely your individual call upon your requirement that system has no responsibility to suggest to the day why don't you make we do as mandatory yeah the system so cannot say system is system is thinking another way that you wanted that intentionally you don't want that as a parameter that is your need that is how system will understand yeah yeah Which which one you know you wanted to which one you wanted to make as data and which one you wanted to make as parameter absolutely that is your call system will think always that you wanted things like that only yeah eclipse also we can do right team uh, eclipse also auto code uh, suggestions are there uh, here also it is there uh, so these are the two places we do right above code but this is much much uh, advanced uh, editor everything you can learn and explore from here much better even comparative editor. and eventually you can do practice that in eclipse also okay. but eclipse just recently it started for years of time we have been learning and working only on this app editor and this is the editor nothing else better than this all right team uh, let's continue our discussion about some more advanced some more things in our programming so we understood how to create parameter statements then how to perform various calculations and display the outputs also similarly let us develop one more program about understanding the other data types also so i'm creating one more program demo for create <coughs> using data types various type of uh, values so like uh, data so variable underscore integer this is one integer variable this is one numeric variable character variable 
this is numeric character n for this is date variable this is time variable this is packet decimal variable this is character variable but with some length this is string variable you see i have declared various types of variables with the different different uh, data types among that you already understood how to use this integers right so v1 equal to some value you can store like integers you can store integer values we don't put in single quotes values we have to put directly as value only we should not put it in the quotes but v2 is a character variable you can store any one single character within that you are not supposed to and that characters always you should put it in the single quotes like v2 equal to suppose if i wanted to store a you should not store like that you have to put it in single quotes but you can store only one single character and v3 equal to some value you wanted to store it is a numeric character so basically what is this is numeric character you can store numbers but it will store internally as a character data type okay in business requirements also we will come to know this type of requirements too so here it is also equal to character but that does not mean that you can store b c d some character symbols you can store only any number but that will be stored that will be stored not as a number as a character numeric values but to be stored as a character we will use this n n for numeric character if really if your purpose is to store three we can take integers only if your purpose is to store some character you can take c but only only numbers should be allowed numbers only should be allowed but still it should be like a character only then it should be taken as numeric character for example i wanted to store 003 is it possible to store 003 in a integer variable no integer variable will not take 003 because 003 means it is only 3 again it will internally store that value as only as 3 only but i wanted to store some value as like 003 so this kind of but it is only numbers only numbers but to be treated as characters in that times we will stay we will take numeric character this is also size only one so one comment i have already explained you team any one line if you wanted to comment you can put the asterisk in the beginning of the line which will make that line as comment similarly on the line itself if you wanted to write any comment you can put a double quote symbol and uh, you can write some comment but still you cannot store three symbols like this you can store only any one you store that so v4 equal to so so i wanted to store some date so today date 2024 uh january month 23rd date you can store some time if you want to store or suppose current time and uh, for date i told you it's a default uh, size default length eight it is length eight and uh, format should be Y Y Y Y M M D D, and for time default length is six. Inside it, it inside it is length is uh, six, and uh, format is H H M M S S. So this is a inline comment. You can write some comment lines also. So whatever you put in double quote, that entire line will become comment again. there is nothing like it will end here and again you can write the program no nothing just all the remaining portion all the remaining part of the line will be treated as comment so inline comments also we can write like this so date value i have stored time value right now it is 450 so 04 so hours hh 50 minutes and then 30 seconds so something you can store like this thing and this is a packet decimal so usually we can store some decimal values for example i wanted to store uh, 25. so this is also a number but still why we are putting it in single quotes because uh, this decimal place the system will understand that it is the end of the statement so only this is only the exceptional case it is a number only 
but still we put it in single quotes. This is not a number time. This is not a number, it is date. This is a character only. And this is again number. This is also number, but still why we are putting it in single quotes because of this decimal symbol. But if you wanted to store some decimals, how many decimals you wanted to store? Two decimals or three decimals? But you should put here actually. Data basics of type P, decimals two. So I wanted to keep up some two decimal values in that one. We can store as such. Then V7. Look at here. V7 is also a character type. What I have mentioned, it can contain up to length 20. So that I can store some name. Welcome. Absolutely. But V8 is a string. As it is a string, I can store any big, any, any length value I can store within that. So like that, different variables, different value assignment you can make. And then you can display their values also. Too. So just for your uh, quick convenience, you later you can uh, format, format them. Let us try to see how the results are coming. Eight variables I have taken. So check for the errors. All are good. Activate the code. It is activated. And then let me run the program. We run the program. V1 value is 100. V2 value is A. Alpha character values will come left alignment, but numbers will come right side. So you don't worry about this different arrangement of while field values. But when the date is displayed, you see 23rd today date. When when it is displayed, it is converted normally. 23rd 01 2024. If you want to put some decimals or slashes, some masking you wanted to do, you can do that. And this is the time format. Four hours, 15 minutes, 30 seconds. And 325.23, uh, this is a packet decimal value. Again, this is also a value. But when the output is coming, decimal value will come as like a comma. If you want, we can change this. But just by default in SAP, uh, that decimal separator will come like a comma. That is OK. But still, this value is equal to 325.23. We should read like that only. And welcome, welcome to SAP. So welcome also stored. Welcome to SAP also displayed here. It is something like this. Why welcome is stored in V7? V7 is a character type, right? But what is the difference between V2 and V7? V2 can contain only single character, but V7 can contain up to 20 characters. But suppose this length of 20 I have removed. So then V2 and V7 both are same. This is also character. This is also character. Here I'm trying to store welcome, but it cannot take because it is a single length. So it will take only W. First letter only it will take, other characters it will not take because V7 is just only created as a character type. Character type by default, it will contain only one single character. Its length is only one. So if I see the output, see, it contains only W. Welcome not stored there. But if you wanted to store, let's provide some length, length of 10. So like this, in a program, you can give a try about all the data types, about storing different values and doing different calculations, different uh, execution of the code. You can give a try like this team on your programs. So totally I have created about uh, four programs here. Now I wanted, uh, once if you've done this one, then I will take you next level about doing the logical operators, if conditions and looping statements, how to write in our program, we will test that. But first I wanted every one of you become familiar about these programming statements. And also especially, I want each one of you write a program, you know, as like our demo three, to do the test of all the calculations. I wanted you to develop a program like this. You write some first value, second value, and display there all the results, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and uh, division. And try to show some uh, nice format also on the output tool to try to display some kind of a box kind of arrangement like this. Not only this, even you just try to put some box like uh, design, box like design like stars I wanted to get here also, stars I wanted to get here also. You make this entire display come like neatly inside a box with some proper underlines or something like that. So try that one. Especially uh, you verify whether you are able to manage, uh, you are able to do parameter statement with calculations and also using of all the other data types as I have described in demo for program. Hey there, want to become a wizard managing supplies? Our SAP ABAP on HANA course is just what you need. You can take it at your speed on our site. In this course, you'll learn all about SAP ABAP on HANA. 
It's like a toolkit for planning things, from ensuring we have enough products to getting them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need, from the basics to advanced tips. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are pros who've been at this for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students love the course too. Folks just like you have found our course super useful. Best part? It's budget friendly. This amazing chance to learn won't cost you much. Ready to become a SAP ABAP on HANA Pro? Sign up on our page now. For more details, head to Zarentech's website. So, so Tim, once again, every every one of you, no matter what seniors, juniors, every one of you, whatever topic we are learning, why we are learning in that extent is like, you know, why am I explaining things also uh, so that way possible is like, not only about to, to write the code on the system, but the roots, the basic, the, the concept should get into your mind. Otherwise, tomorrow why we are creating classes, why are we not working with the standard types, you will not be in a position to describe the difference. Class means your yeah, class we have to create. Why, why are we creating classes? Why should we go for class creation instead of using the scalar types? We will not be able to differentiate that because the understanding, the concept understanding is very crucial there. As the central rightly said, so we discussed about data types, creating various data objects uh, by using various standard data types. And we have learned some of the standard data types like integer, character, I, C, D, T, right? And by using those standard data types, we have created some of the data containers, or also you can call as data objects, or also you can call them as variables. Various names, what matter, all are mean for the same thing only. We call them as variables, we call them as data, data objects, we call them as data containers, because ultimately they are helping you to store some data within it. But how are we creating such a data object? For creating a data object, we always need a data type. To store a value, we need a data object. For creating a data object, we need a data type. That is a simple relation. Because the data type, what is data type? The answer for that is like, data type basically, it is a definition. Data type is a definition. It is defining the set of characteristics. It is defining the characteristics of the data object you are going to create by using that respective data type. What kind of data object will born by using that particular data type? That is the definition of the data type. So data type, simply we can compare like this thing. Usually for Ganesh festival, for, uh, uh, you know, we, we do celebrate uh, Ganesh Navratris, right? Ganapati Navratris, uh, we do celebrate. Vinayak uh, Chavit, uh, something, we, we call Vinayak Chavit, right? So usually we buy idols, Ganesh idols, and we bring them to home and then we, we do worship. Just one example I'm saying. How each of that Ganesh idol made, each of that Ganesh idol is made basically by using one specific mold. So basically the people will have some kind of molded shape will be there with them. Like let's take one feet Ganesha, just only a small Ganesha for, for our home. I'm not talking about the bigger ones. So how, how do they make that one? There is a molding. So that molding basically defining the characteristics. Will that Ganesha comes with, uh, you know, uh, with uh, how many uh, garlands on his neck and then uh, will he come on sit on flower or will he come sit on that uh, his vahan or will he sit on some drum? So how it will come, that is basically defined once. That is there inside that molding. How the molding is made of? As many ideals you prepared out of that mold, all will come in the same way. 
so that is your data type and as many molds as many ganesh ideals you are making they are all data objects so number of data objects we are creating because number of ganesh ideals we are producing according to our requirement each one will have each one will have its own color so once if the ganesh ideal is made from the mold one thing you can apply blue color one thing you can apply red color one thing you can apply gold color whatever you are wish they are all independent data objects every one is a object that is the meaning of object object means which you can sense which you can touch which you can visualize which is the meaning of existency that is called object in real life also we will we use that word called objects object surrounding us object means the one which you can see which you can feel which you can touch so here also that is called data object where the data is being stored that is called data object in the programming language but how that data object is made by using one molding because that molding is basically defining certain characteristics how much height will that ganesh ideal will come it depends who is deciding the height of the ganesha how do you know how, how much uh, height of that ganesha ideal will, will will come out after making where is that information will that ganesha ideal come 1 ft or 2 ft or 10 ft who is deciding that i mean how do you know that where is that uh, information so yeah, i am making one ganesh ideal by using one molding i am making one ganesh ideal by using one molding don't i know how uh, how long will it come out before i make it or before i make it itself will i come to know what what would be the height of that ideal or not or suddenly it will born as 5 ft height or suddenly will it born as 10 ft height or do i know before itself even that this this would be the height of my ganesha which i am making where is that how do you know that that mold defines what will come out that mold will decide how ganesh will come out and all the objects you are making by using the same mold will be the same but every one is an independent object so every object will have its own information within it will it will, will have its own colors and others but all the objects are getting born by the mold at the same time can we bring that mold and can we do puja to that mold no so data types you you find the difference between data types and data objects here so as we cannot use mold for puja to bring it to home here data types you cannot store anything within the data types it is a definition only it is describing ultimately at the end it is producing the objects and objects are the existency and that objects will have the values every object will have its own values if you wanted to store a value even if you have data type no use of it if you have 10 molds see you have 10 different molding shapes with you ganesh ideal model molding 10 10 moldings you have but you don't have single ganesh ideal what does that mean you have 10 moldings but you don't have single ganesh ideal that means you have 10 data types but you have not created any single data object in that program you have not created any variables so like that you should able to differentiate the difference between data types and data objects so all these data types also we have seen in our previous examples integer is a data type character is a data type then all these are called standard data types that means all these are created defined by sap system in the abap language and we are using that just simply it is like ready made moldings available so we are using them and we are defining our variables we need be required but sometimes what will happen certain times you may have a requirement you may have a requirement in such a way you wanted some data object to store values differently but for creating that kind of ganesha none of your ideals are helping out you wanted one ganesha to be like in uh, sleep mode like like in fall in sleep kind of shape you have 10 moldings yeah ganesha that trunk ears hands legs everything is coming but still even you have a different purpose you have a different requirement you might have 10 moldings 
but none of that molding that means none of that data types will work out to prepare the object you want but if that is your requirement first what should you do see what i'm saying is that i have so many standard data types i uh, integer type character type data type time type and by using these data types i'm very comfortable in creating various data objects i'm so happy my life is going smooth but suddenly i got a requirement i have to create one data object to store some data but to create that type of data object to create that kind of container there is no data type uh, suitable data type is available in the system is it a character type no 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 it is not character i want to store one character one number one date all together inside that so that is the kind of data i wanted to store within that but uh, shall i shall i declare it as an integer variable no 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 integer variable not uh, work out here my um, i i wanted to store something different i wanted to store some different value in that way none of these data types will fulfill my requirement that one only i am comparing with ganesh ideals like i have 10 moldings and i am making different sizes of ganeshas okay but now i have a different requirement in which my ganesha should come not only with four hands two legs two ears like that and one trunk uh, not like that but that the ganesha should come like in a sleeping uh, mode like falling to ready getting ready for sleep kind of uh, uh, flat model i want if that is my requirement to make that kind of ganesha first what should i do but none of my moldings will make the ganesh ideal in that shape you need to create a new mold exactly you have to create a new mold to produce that kind of ideal output that means if you compare that here in the technical terminology what should you create here create new data type exactly we have to create new data types is it possible yes we can develop our own data types also we can develop our own data types also so that our containers also our data objects also will acquire different proper different characteristics and i can able to store different types of data for example i wanted to buy this type of bag look at this bag on the screen but in the market this type of bags are not available but this is my very unique requirement so that i can store different content within that but if i can get this type of bag directly from the market standard standard data type then i am my job is done but there is no such type of bag being available in the market then i have made it at home i stitched it like that first i bought the out, outside bag only because this center outer bag i cannot make it so that i bought but inside that i have made some kind of arrangement within uh, within myself and i made this kind of compartment cells finally i prepared one thing which can help me out to, to store the different type of so previously earlier can you make this kind of data object by using any of the standard data types no can i store integer and character both in single variable no but now in the single bag i can store them because this is completely made up differently when you go to market somebody ask hey where did you buy this then we will proudly say no no i only made it i only made it it is not i did not buy this anywhere i only made it like this uh, at home because your purpose is driving you your requirement is driving you what will happen at your home you will take two different bags and both you will stitch together and you will make a jumbo bag and you will take it to the shop and somebody will will get impressed with that and will say hey this is looking very nice where did you buy this then you will say no 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 i only made this it is custom custom data types depend on your requirement we have to do create that how do we create let us go to our program again team hope you are able to look at my sop screen so here from the variables v1 to v8 i have created all of these by using so many standard data types like integer character numeric character date time or packet decimals and uh, character with some length 20 and string type also but this time what i am doing i am creating a new data type if you wanted to develop a new data type we will create with the keyword called types so types 
V9, something like that you say. Can you, can someone tell me what is the difference from V1 to V8 and what is the difference or what is the difference between V8 and V9? The, here the name I given V8, here the name I given V9, but technically what is the first difference between V8 and V9? So here V8 equal to, you say, I'm storing some value star. V9 is equal to, I'm storing some simple hash. Tell me team, what is the difference between V8 and V9 in this case? Both are uh, mean for the same, or did you see any difference there? I mean, don't don't look at this string, okay? Just think like it is also character, or, or let me say this one also. Same. What's wrong in the for some time? Then can someone describe what is V8 and what is V9? So can I store a hash symbol in V9? Let me put star or wrong. V8 is a Ganesh ideal. V9 is a molding. You see the difference very clearly between those two. Because in real time, because you will easily able to distinguish the difference between an ideal and a molding, right? Like that here also. Like that here also, V8 is a data container. It is a data container in which you can store something. V9 is not a container. It is actually created with a different keyword. The keyword is types. The types is describing this is a data type, but not data object. This is a data type, but not data object. You can store value only in the data object. I told you, molding we cannot bring to home for Buja. Same. Types we cannot use to store the data. So here V8 is a data object because this is created by the keyword data. Always you have to look at the first word, how it is being made, you have to observe that. And this is created as a type only. So definitely V9 is not eligible to store anything within it because it is not a data container. It is just only a data type. You can store anything in V8. Similarly, don't compare V9 because V9 itself, first of all, is not a data object. It is a data type. We must be able to clearly notice the difference. This is the same thing will applicable even when it comes to the object oriented programming. Your class will become the data type. From the class, whatever instances you are creating, that will become the data objects. That means you can store the content, you can store the information in the instances, data objects, but not in the class because class will behave like a data type. Of course, it will come later. We will talk at the terms, but even for that, these definitions, this understanding is very crucial because the very primary terminology, all this is the very primary terminology. The more clarity you have on the primary terminology, very complex level of understanding of subject also, we can able to digest it. So this is a data type. So then why I have created V8? So definitely I can use this one now as a data type for declaring my variables for suppose how I am creating one example here, you see. So data um, like um, some like P1 of type V9. Can I do this? Yes, exactly. Absolutely, I can do this. So here P1 is the name of my variable. Now in P1, I can store something. How this P1 is created? This is defined by using V9. Then I have to go and say, what is V9? So V9 is, a, is basically a data type. What type of data type it is? It is again a character based, really belong like a character type data type. So then somebody will ask them, then why should I create a data type like V9? Instead of this, I can directly take uh, type C now. Yes, you can take. You no need to, we don't create also that kind of objects. Then somebody tell me both P1 and P2 are same, same type of data objects. So Tim, tell me P1 and P2 are same or equal backs. Yes, both this character. Both are character of size one. Character one, character one. But both are created from two different. This is created from V9 or some custom type, but this is created from standard type. Still even. This is a and this one both are almost like the same similar size of bags. This is also character one. This is also character one, like that. Now you understood how to create the types. But when do we create this type of types? Normally, when we wanted to have 
some complex uh, building like i just shown here something unusual requirement like this something unusual requirement when you have when your standard data types are not letting you to do the job done then we do create some custom types we will see with a different example team so i just described here in this example but this program i don't disturb let us go for creating a new program demo 5 create So in this lesson, we are learning how to define custom types. As I said, any custom type, if you wanted to build, you have to give the definition with the types. Okay. So let me define some custom types. So types name of type C than the one they have created. Now, basically, this name is actually not a variable. This is a type because look at here. This is created by the keyword types. Now, this one I can use here in my program to simplify my program. So data first name of type name. Data first name of type name. Data surname of type name. See, now what type of variables are these three? First name, last name, and surname. What is the characteristic of this data container? What I can store in this first name? I can store any characters of length 20. But here you look at this, I did not mention. This is defined as one custom type for me. Now, all these variables, first name, last name, surname, are created with reference to this particular data type. What is name? It is not a standard data type. It is not C, D, something. This is a custom type which I have created. But how I created? This is created with reference to the standard type with the length of 20, something like that. Then somebody might ask, why should we create like this? We can create like this also now. Of course, these two are same. But look at the code. Look at the code. Though it is making sense about writing one more line, but which one is easy to read, easy to understand? In your program, when you write multiple lines of code, wherever you see this name, you will understand that okay, it is a some 20 length size but here every time first name character 20 second name character 20 third name character 20 rather you have created your own custom type that custom type you have used for the declaration of your variables so even individually personally which one is the first three lines of uh, the first it is four lines it is three lines still even which is making more readable more easy to understand First one. First one. Approach. Programming approach. So like that, we can create some custom types team. Not only that, another set of uh, another. Uh, so we will comment this. Is this correct? Yeah, exactly. No syntax errors. Then I can store first name is equal to Ravi. Last name is equal to Kumar. Surname is equal to Ravkumar Pidda. Then I can display all their names, display first name, last name. I can store something. So that is making the program more readable. Similarly, what else are the other types of data types I can create? I can create something like this also, so like types amount of type B decimals to. So I have created another data type of my own. This time my data type is name is amount. What is the type it is? It is with reference to P with the decimals to. I have completely, I have completely embedded that definition in my new data type amount. Now here I can write here data price of type amount. Data gross of type amount. Data net of type amount. So every time I'm using my data type amount, amount is my own data type, but this is created with some decimals too. So that means it is a numeric value with decimals too. This is a numeric value with decimals too. This is a numeric value with decimals too. Every time I know to mention that here because that is captured inside one definition. That is captured inside a definition. That definition I am using 
for the declaration of my variables for the declaration of my container elements or for the declaration of my data objects so this kind of programming we do right when developing applications because we use it to handle multiple uh, data element multiple data objects multiple amount of data we need to process so during that times not only the data objects but data types also very significant how are you catching the difference between data object and the data type team everyone is it clear any questions on this on this subject line don't hesitate uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions feel free is it clear team for everyone yes but 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 the purpose not only getting limit limited over here team even we will be extending this even for making up much more progress now something like how like as i have shown as a bag like container with multiple components i wanted to store i want so now let us extend this discussion with making it even more complex team so i wanted a data type in such a way where i wanted to store one uh, my my employee id my name, i mean i mean to say my name my age and my weight my name my age and my weight i wanted to store all these three values but i don't want three different variables but name is different uh, my age is different my weight is a decimal Uh, with uh, 35.65 kilos or something like that my age is a number uh, some integer number my name is a character string but i wanted to store all this information not in three different variables but i wanted to store in a single variable then what should be that variable type so what is that data here i am saying record of type one record but what type should i use type i no type c no type string no they are all scalar types it will help you only to store only one value but i wanted to store three different values but only in a single data container in a single holder in a single element not to have multiple elements for that so those are actually called as structured structure objects we can say then how do we create that type of uh, data container as i have shown in the uh, picture here i wanted to store multiple things within the same one without getting all of them get messed up anything i can pick up easily anything i can put it inside that because every one of them is having a separate individual cabins for that if you wanted to create that kind of object you have to prepare first one relevant data type like that let me make such a data type this is the syntax for that so begin of let me say some name any name you can give so like this first you will make one this is a block types begin of employee types end of employee so this is the starting and end now within that what are the how many compartments do you want i want three compartments what should be the compartment names c1 c2 c3 again what is c2 what is c3 you cannot understand it to give some meaningful names first compartment name employee id second compartment name employee name third compartment uh, compartment employee is so like this i wanted three compartments within that finally it is only one data type the data type name is employee which contains three different compartments within this but what is what should what i wanted to store in employee id what i wanted to store i wanted to store some uh, numeric character employee id is a 0005 something like that it is coming so of type n length 5 i wanted to store what i wanted to store in employee name it is a character type of length 20 and what is is this is an integer of type 5 i wanted to store but still even so this is one data type ultimately i am making up within that i wanted to have three different compartments each compartment name i give an employee id employee name and is here we have to follow the same thing types the keyword should be continued types types basically you don't think that these are all the types team these are all called the types no no 
these are the internal sections only this is only your type name employee is becoming your type name so this is how we will create one complex structure type as well then type is prepared type is made we can start use of that how do we start use of this employee now let's create how do you create the data object again you know everyone knows by this time data object creation variable creation how do you create the variable tell me the syntax hmm data come on you should say mm. name of the variable ah, okay even type data type what, name what is the data type you created employee 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 is a data type you created team it is not a kind of employee is a data type just now you created you see look at here when it is types that means you have bought, you have made a new molding you have made a new type so data e2 of type employee as many employee records you want that many objects you will create anyhow e1 is a employee object now now in e1 you can store then in e1 what can i store employee name john can i store like this no no more because this e1 is made up in such a way it has three individual cells it has three individual components in which in which compartment you wanted to store that item also you should mention so that you will refer like this e1 iphone eid employee id employee id 0001 then what is the second compartment name e1 iphone e name prabhu i did not store the third one okay that's my wish i am leaving that uh, compartment empty i am fine with that all compartments i don't require to fill say i fill this compartment i fill this compartment i fill this compartment these two compartments i left empty what's wrong in that i don't have anything to put it there but now i just kept it empty like that here also in this structure variable even is a data object it is created so it exactly works like this thing what is its name this compartment name is even sorry this this variable name is even in this one this first compartment name is eid second second compartment in e name third compartment in name yes now eid i stored 0 0001 0, i stored in e name what is stored prabhu i stored then what is this value no no value is there that's okay when i display also this value i will display this value i will display if i try to display as 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 will become zero because you know by default it is a integer variable so it will hold zero that only will be there if i wanted to store some of his as also i can store but finally this is three variables or is it only is it uh, one container is it one bag or do i have three different bags one bag one bag what is the name of the bag e1 e1, e1. that's it can i create one more bag like that e2 yes yes i can create as many as i want same thing did i store any values here no i did not store any values here whenever i want i can store but i have three different compartments that values will not get mess but ultimately my program only has two variables first variable e1 second variable e2 but just instead of calling them variables we are calling them structures we will call them internal tables we will call them class objects we will use different different names sometimes we will call work area sometimes we will call structures whatever it is they are all data containers all are there for storing some information how big it is how small it is what you can store what you cannot store that is absolutely deciding by the corresponding data type here again i can store e1 hyphen case is equal to 55 yeah like that you can able to store the data finally if you wanted to display the output also you can display the output 
given iPhone yearly. Employee is given iPhone is always you have to refer that particular value with the relevant name of that compartment of that particular cell. Let's check this program. Activate the program. Execute the program. Employee ID 00001. Name is Prabhu. Employee is okay. This one I should change the description. Yes, 55. So, like that, I could be able to get the output. So, we have created one complex structure type. One structure type we created by this way. And by using this type employee, I could be able to create a container. In that container, I could able to access each cell, each compartment, and I could able to store some data. And finally, we have accessed that data also. While storing the data, this is the notation. While accessing the data, this is the notation. Structure name, iPhone, field name. Structure name, iPhone, field name. That particular compartment name, that particular cell name, we should represent. But you cannot display all of them at once. Every compartment, every component, you have to call one after one only. If I say write e, E1, will it display the whole stuff? No, it will not display, but it will work out in, in a different case that we can do an experiment on that and then observe the results and then tell me. We have to find out if I, if I do like this, what will happen? Will it show any error or will it display anything? What it is displaying, why it is behaving like that? Those things, we should do the self-exploring. Similarly, let me create one more container also. Wow, I created one more container like this. Now here, I will store one employee ID here, 0002 I will store here. E2 employee ID is equal to Zero 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 two. E two is equal to sixty five. Okay, employee will get rated at sixty five. So let me put sixty. I did not store the name. Let me display the records of second employee also. I have created another employee record. Here it is E2. But after it is created, I stored only employee ID and employee A's. I forgot to store the employee name here. That means the data is like this. His A's is 60, it is there, but still this field is blank. I did not store any of his name in this compartment. Then when I'm trying to display, obviously it is a character type field, so it will have the blank space only the blank only will be displayed, the default values. As I already told last class in the last session we discussed. So his A's is, sorry, his name is blank. If I not stored A's value, it will come zero. And a numeric character will come zero. This will come space, and the default values will come. I wanted to copy, now I wanted to copy first employee name to second employee name. How do I do that? I wanted to copy this value to here. Not entire even I wanted to copy to entire E2. If that is the case, I can do like this. E2 equal to E1. If E2 equal to E1, if I write, the complete information of E1 will overwrite here. But I wanted to copy only his name to here. So how do we copy that? E2 hyphen E name. All right, let's test your knowledge. Here's a question for you. What is the purpose of the calculation scenarios in ABBA on HANA? Option A, to define and execute complex calculations on database data. Option B, 
to handle user authentication. Option C, to optimize disk storage. Option D, to manage database connections. Take a moment to think and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. So by doing this way, I am copying the name of the first employee into the name of the second employee field. Only that. Remaining all untouched so that that values remains the same. A60 employee ID, this one, these two remain the same. Only this value is only getting copied into this. Right? So let us check the results now. Activate this. Execute this. Perfect. His name also Prabhu. His name also Prabhu. But his ID is a different. But if you, instead of doing this, if you do this way, what will happen? The complete information of, you stored, you stored these values, but after that, what you did, this entire structure, you copied in, you copied onto this. So this value will overwrite here. This value will overwrite here. This value will overwrite here. Ultimately, the complete record of E1 and E2, both will remain the same, E2 equal to E1. If I do this, let us observe the results, what will happen? Even I'm displaying the E2 data, both records will come because the same E1 data is copied into E2. All right, team? And then let us understand how to clear the content. Both are displayed. Somehow, I wanted to once again erase. I wanted to erase the, the complete information of E2. Uh, I mean, employee two name is wrong. I wanted to erase that. There is a command called clear. Clear E2 E name. If I set this, what will happen, you know? So here some Prabhu or John or whatever is there here. So when I said clear E2 E name, this value will be cleared. This value, this value remains. Only this value will get cleared. That means you are saying, hey, in that bag, uh, that uh, third cell, uh, you just make it empty. Go to go to that bag. Uh, in that bag, there is a center cell is there. Now you bring everything what is there in that compartment, in that pocket. So the pocket will become blank. We are addressing that particular spot. Clear E2 E name will clear the content in that structure at that field. Like that, any single field you can clear team. Any normal variables also you can clear. But if you wanted to clear the entire information of E2, simply you can write like this. Clear E2. will clear all the values of E2. All these values will get cleared at once. It will become blank. So you can store like that. You can clear individual fields or the entire fields of the structure also. You can clear by using these commands. So in this program, we have learned how to create some custom types like this and using them for declaring objects or how to build some complex uh, structure types also. And by using that, how to declare some containers with multiple pockets and storing the values within that we discussed. But here, if you look at this example, you see types, 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 all the lines anyhow starting with types. So I already told you one shortcut operator uh, when all the continuous sequence of statements coming with same keyword, I told you, right, we can uh, avoid the uses of uh, uh, the keywords by putting this uh, shortened operator. So I can put comma here, and comma here, I can put comma here, finally one full stop. And uh, these words I can take off. No, sorry, I did not copy this lastly now. So here also I should put comma, finally dot. I'll comment post. These two are same. The above definition and below definition both are same. What we did, just instead of repeating that uh, keyword types every time, we write it only once. And by, by putting comma, this is applicable to all the statements. 
until the end originally this is the original definition this is the shortcut way of writing that's it here also invisibly the types is continuing for all these statements is it clear thing so this is how we do create local types but now i have a different requirement here i stored one employee e2 i stored another record then someone will ask so here employee one here employee two here employee three you just think like if i have 100 employees will i create 100 variables like this 100 container elements should i create to store so in e1 i stored one employee in e2 i stored employee now in my program i have to store 100 employees data my program has to deal deal with the 100 employee records because i wanted to compare who salary is highest who salary is lowest and who is experienced whose performance rating is high etc cetera, etc cetera. i wanted to store 100 employees records in my program from where the data is coming just keep it aside aside just think we will, we will come to that point after some time but if i wanted to store 100 employee records will i declare 100 variables like this and can we do can we can we make up 100 variables mm, then no sir. no then we will come across a need can I store multiple records once again in the single container? Yes. So now look at here, same thing. Can I store 001, 002, 003 like this? Probo record 55. Kishore, 45, Sudha, 40, etc. What is this name? May not, don't get confused with this even and this even. Uh, let me take this so R1. Or let's say T1, table 1. So should I create a hundred variables like this or shall I have only one variable in which I can able to store multiple records also. Again, all are different. Each one is a record and bunch of records. And this is how many variables totally? This, this, this one is how many variables totally? I mean, I mean to say, I mean to say, sorry, my question might be wrong. This is how many containers totally? This is how many bags I mean to say? Single one. Single single container object what is the container name here t1 t1 so here in this example left hand side example how many containers we taken five containers okay i will take up that three containers so three containers three records single container more records depend on the requirement again i'm saying team when you are going to market which bag will you take it exactly depends on the need. It exactly depends on the need. When you're going to market just to buy some lemons, you don't carry a 10 kilo bag with you for, 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 for buying five lemons or six lemons. You'll just simply take one simple bag which you can keep it in your pocket and you will go. But when you are going to the market to buy about 10 kilos of vegetables, then the same simple bag is not sufficient at all. So which one will you carry? along with you when you're going to the market is absolutely driven by your need. That a decision making, that common sense will, will tell us, this is what is my purpose, what is my need, for which what should I carry? Similarly, on top of your need. So first we have seen this type of example. 
variable one. So in this variable, I could able to store some data. Only name I could able to store. From the variables in which you can store any time only one value, we moved on to the structures so that I can able to store multiple values as a single record. But again, my record count is increasing and I, again, my, my number of containers are increasing. Can't I store all of that multiple records? Because here there is a commonality. All the records looks like same. Then can't I store multiple records in the single container? Yes, we can. Then how to store, but before that, how to create that kind of container? This is the way. We already created E1, E2, E3, we have already seen here. So this is a structure type you already have. What is this employee team? What is this employee? Data type. It is a data type. Just to, to differentiate that, we do create some keyword called a TY we will write it. But I'm not writing here because by, by looking at that, you will tell it is a type. That's why I'm not writing those naming standards here. You follow the concept, then you will. Otherwise, by looking at here TY, yeah, you will say it is a type because here TY is there. No? That is just a name we given. If I give something else, will it, will it become something else without a type? No matter what, it is always a type. But now this program, how I wanted a container in which I can able to store multiple records also. But unfortunately, even cannot store multiple records. My E2 also cannot store multiple records. But I wanted something in which I can store multiple records. How do I create that kind of uh, stuff? This is the way. Data T1 of type. Look at here thing. Very simple. Data T1 of type. Just you have to use one more addition called table of. Table of same type. You look at these two lines, you will simply understand the difference between E1 and T1. That is also employee type. This is also employee type. But here, I just additionally used one more keyword called table of. By writing table of, system will understand that, uh, hey, this guy wanted to store multiple records. Let me create multiple rows in this T1. Then your T1 will be prepared like this, which is letting you to create multiple rows. Then usually some questions will raise here. How many rows we can store? No problem, guys, unlimited. System will keep on add memory space to that, you don't bother about the number of records on which how many you can store, as many as you want, you can store. Keep adding the rows. So now T1 is prepared. T1 is made up here. See, look at these two lines and understand the difference. This is also created from employee. This is also created from employee. But what is the difference between E1 and T1 here? Tim, if you don't you answer questions, sure. yes, if you if you don't answer questions, I don't understand whether you guys are following or not, who is listening, who is not. Still, even you can still see, look at this, look at that Excel sheet. Look at how the E1 is formed. Look at how the T1 is formed. This entire name is T1. Don't say this row is called T1. This is T2, not, no. This entire orange, this saffron item, this is, uh, this is your T1. That entire bag, these are all individual bags. So finally, we have created that kind of T1 as well. Then how do I store the data in that T1? Okay, now T1 is prepared up, right? Now how do I store 001, Prabhu, 55, 002? Unfortunately, here in E1, if you wanted to store the data, you can write like this. E1 hyphen EID is equal to 0001. You can write like this. In E1, you can store, or in, in this name, this Prabhu name, I wanted to change to Jadeja. So simply I can change even E name is equal to Jadeja. I can change. So this name got changed. But here we cannot do like that. T1 employee name 
T1 employee ID, you cannot to do it because system don't understand employee name means this name or this name or this name. It cannot understand. It is a table. In structure only, it is possible to refer individual fields. But in this table, it is not possible to refer your individual fields. Then how do I handle this? To handle this one, you know, this type of structure, this T1 in our above terminology, we call it as internal table. Now, that is nothing but here, this T1 only is called internal table, in which you can able to store multiple records. The C1 are called structure objects. These are variables, simple, singular, only single, single element variables. Single container, but with multiple pockets are called structures. Same thing with the multiple rows. That is called internal table. But if you wanted to handle this internal table, how do you store the data in this? How do you display this data from the internal table again means to work with internal table, you know, you need to create one helper. He needs some assistant. This T1 needs one assistant. Like T1, no, we need one single container element. So there is one big drum, very big drum. Some big oil drum is there. If you wanted to pour some oil from that, you cannot lift it. You cannot lift it and you cannot bend it and you cannot pour it. Certainly you have to use a small mug in your hand and you have to take some small quantity from there. From the bucket also, the whole bucket you don't lift up and then you will pour the water on your head. You will take up some quantity from there by using the help of a mug. Bucket also will hold water. Mug also will hold water. And if you want to fill the bucket also, you will, you will, it is not possible to, you just think like a very big bucket. You cannot drag it under the tap. You will fill the, you will fill the water in mug and you will pour it in bucket. Again, you will fill, you will pour it. Again, you will fill and, and again, you will dump it in the bucket. Like that, as like an example, like a big bucket and a mug, either for filling the bucket or for reading the data from the bucket, getting getting the content out of it. As, as the mug in your hand is helping you. Similarly, for internal tables also, to store the data within it, to read the data from there, we need to take the help of one, bug, one mug. So this is your mug in, in, in layman terminology. Technically, we call this one as work area or also we can call it as like structure. It is also a structure basically, same, same like this. But which we have created for the purpose to help to your internal table, we call it as work area. Same, same like even this. What is the difference between even and this one? Both are same. And will it have a name? Yes, of course, he will have. So he is, a, let, let's say, let's say called even. He is an assistant. He is an assistant to help to T1. Both E1 and A1, both are same team. Look at here. Look at here. Both are same. So this is a structure created similar to your internal table structure. A structure created as like your internal table, representing one single row. Here you can fill. How do you fill? A1 employee ID is equal to something. Because you have seen, you already learned that. That concept only you're applying. So here, by, by, by default here, there's no data. What I will do here, 001, Robo, is it First, you will, fill the, you will fill the water in the mug. You will take it up and you will pour it, you will, you know, fill it in the bucket. How do you do that? You will write this command. Append A1 to T1. There is a command called append. What will happen? This information will go and will fall here. Will get appended there. Fantastic. First record we filled in. First a mug of water we filled in that bucket. After that, what we will do? 
I will say clear A1. All this data will get cleared because, of course, I should. Otherwise, still it will be there. So you will do clear A1. This command will add but does not clean this data. Let's clean this again. And again, start filled with the new data. 0, 0, 0, 2. Sudha is 50. This record also to be added, no? again, you write. Append A1 to T1. This data will simply will go and get appended here. Again, you have to do clear A1. This data will get cleared. Let's do the same thing. Again, clear will clear this data. So this is a continuous process like this. But of course, we will find a lot of shortcuts for doing this. But technically, no matter what, what shortcuts you do, you do use, but technically, this is the only way we can store some data in the internal table. And also, we can read the data also from the internal table. So variables, you can play freely. Structures, you can play freely. Internal tables are heavy so that we cannot play with them freely. We need to take the help of one assistant. That assistant structure we have to create. He is behaving the role like a mug, if you think he is a bucket. And then this particular structure, we also call it as a structure variable or a work area also you can call up to your names. But this is the behavior. Let us see through an example. So this program is working fine. Now from this program, what I will do, I don't want to disturb this program. I will create a one more program. So this type remains the same. E1 is created as a structure. E1 is created. Okay, let me take his assistant E1. So this is a new program. Check for the errors. Absolutely good. Activate the program. Not activated. If you run the output, will I get any output? No, because I did not write any write statements here. So now output will come. So I, I created a structure team here. Same structure. It is a structure type actually. Sorry, I should not call it a structure, structure type. Then I created one work area and one internal table. Like this, as I have shown in this example, one T1 and one A1, one assistant to one table, right? So with the help of this guy A1, I will fill the data into T1. But directly, I cannot pour the data in T1. So E1 employee ID, employee name is I given. And after that, I should say append, append A1 to T1. First record added to your internal table. After that, I will say clear that. And again, I will add another set of records after this. 002. So the S50, again, I will append that record. It is added. Again, I will clear that. So successfully, I have added three records into my internal table. It is added, but how do I know they got added? 
if i able to display that data from the t1 only i will come to know that all are added isn't it the records are appended to the internal table what is internal table internal table name here t1 what is the work area name a1 a1 see team i am hearing the answer only from one voice every time only one participant is there in the class please respond i wanted to know how many rows totally are there in my internal table now there is some techniques for that to come to know how many records are there in your internal table but before go there now i wanted to display the data for displaying the data there is one easy shortcut because there could be hundreds of records there so i wanted to get all of them i can use this same guy same bucket same mug same mug i can so this mug i use it to fill the water again the same mug i can use to get the water also out of the bucket right or else i will use a different mug i can use another container let me take a different container his name is jp why am i taken this guy this guy basically i have taken to just to show you the difference only team i i can play with only this guy only one mug i don't need two different mugs but let me work with this it i wanted to get first first this entire record you should get from internal table to this work area then from a to we can display the data after that that second record should come from internal table to your work area this record also you can display then third record should come from internal table to your work area then the third record also you can display you cannot display directly from t1 but you can display only from structure because you have already seen that structure only you can store structure only you can display so from internal table each record one after one should come to my work area from there i wanted to display it on my screen how do we do that there is a looping and this processor should continue until i found until i reach the last record maybe 10 records 20 records 40 records i don't know but that process i wanted to continue until i read all the data of my internal table how do we do that there is a command here called loop loop at so loop at what is your internal table name t1 loop at t1 into a uh, every record uh, should come to what first first record first record should come into to whom first record uh, you are expecting to come into whom a2 a2 this one this one you are using now team this guy this guy you are using right now for getting all the data one after one so you will write the command like this loop at t1 into a2 so first record will come let me display quickly that data a2 hyphen employee id so this is an automatic stuff this loop will continuously repeat first record will come to a2 that is displayed when it comes to end loop it will check still is there any more record yes it will go again back it will get the second record it will get the third record fourth record after the first record displayed you better always because it is displayed already so you better clear that clear the data of a2 always make that mug very clean first record came here it is displayed and after that you clear that of course anyhow second record will come second record will fall in second record will copy here but still it is always a good practice clear this data then second record will come into your work area this will be displayed after the displaying purposefully we are clearing this we are keeping this empty then third record will come it will fall in here that also is displayed after displayed again we are clearing that we are always keeping this 
because this is an assistant not the clearing of work area will not clear the data of your internal table so no issue at all your data always is safe in the internal table this is how reading the data from internal table this one is writing the data to internal table writing means storing storing the data in the internal table reading the data from the internal table let us see uh, after clearing better in the loop only i will i will display some some stars at the end of every record first record printed cleared then i displayed star again second record so between a record to record within the loop i wanted that stars also to be displayed check for the errors will a2 is unknown Oh, I have taken A one. Okay, I did not declare that here. See why am I taking two marks? No point, no necessary. Just for storing one thing and reading one thing, I am using two things only. Not compulsory. Say still same A one also I can use for demonstration, for easy understanding. Avoid confusion only. I am doing that. Still, if it is making unnecessary confusion, let me know. So first record displayed stars, second record displayed stars, third record also displayed stars. After displaying every record, I'm displaying star line also. All these are displayed only because of this loop. See, there is nowhere right statement, but all are displayed. That means this loop executed continuously three times. Three times, all the three records got read and displayed on the screen. This is how we can store. Data in the internal table. Display the data also from the internal table. Okay, still, we are not uh, getting to the database tables, Mara tables, customer tables, vendor tables. Just the programming concepts we are understanding. After that, all these techniques we will apply on the real business cases. First, the techniques you should know. It is simply simply to say this is something like I am teaching you drawing. first when i'm teaching drawing what should i teach you how to draw landscape how to draw one beautiful buildings first i should teach you how many brushes you have what is called h1 brush what is called p1 brush what is the types of brushes what is it how to mix the colors what is the properties of colors learn the basics after that i can give you the assignment someone should draw one landscape and someone should draw one uh, uh, building and someone should draw himalaya photos whatever it is there the skills that you learned will comes into the picture about applying for the need for the requirement who can draw the better landscape because all of you are taught the basic skills about how to use brushes paints colors everything same way similar way but the moment when you are applying your skill on the need on the development there the application skills will be vary that's the reason no one's will no one no one's paint looks like the same to like others one somebody draw very fantastic picture but all learned the skills in the similar way but while applying their skills along with their thought process the output results will be vary similarly for programmers also all programmers will learn the same skills because i am teaching the same thing for every one of you but when the real requirement comes how you are applying this skill set over there will make the differentiation you can able to apply your skills only when you are very sure about the fundamental skills if the fundamentals are not strong certainly that gap you will see while applying your skills okay see when i run the program here i am getting this title using types actually this is not the type i given for this program because i copied my previous programs so title only coming here this title should get changed for this new program because 
I copied from the old program, so same title also get copied here. That is your question, right? Before? Yes, dear. Yes. Right. If you wanted to change that, uh, so here, this is your program. Anyhow, if you want to change the program, you can go to change. But here you can change this coding, coding only, not that particular title. If you want to change that one, here, don't select the source code. If you come down, 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 here one section is there. What is this? Attributes. You go to attributes and then go to change. The program attributes, what are copied from there will come here. So oh. here, it is not using types, but using internal tables. Something you can change. So I went to attributes of this program. Not again, come back to source code to activate it and then execute it. It will work with you. Mm -hmm. So this is about, so this is about defining custom types, internal tables, storing the data in internal table, reading the data from the internal table at a very generic level, normal level. From there on, we will take it into more complex structures types of internal tables, et cetera, et cetera, team. But this concept always should be there in your mind. The difference between a variable and a structure and an internal table and the helpers to the internal table. Hey there, want to become a wizard managing supplies? Our SAP ABAP on HANA course is just what you need. You can take it at your speed on our site. In this course, you'll learn all about SAP ABAP on HANA. It's like a toolkit for planning things, from ensuring we have enough products to getting them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need, from the basics to advanced tips. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are pros who've been at this for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students love the course too. Folks just like you have found our course super useful. Best part? It's budget friendly. This amazing chance to learn won't cost you much. Ready to become a SAP ABAP on HANA Pro? Sign up on our page now. For more details, head to Zarentech's website.